Lyriel One Love. Everybody, and welcome back to Twofold Tuesday. Uh, you know how I said I wasn't gonna have this post it note up because this was part of Millie's route, and I'm doing Caprice's route now. Um, I changed my mind, I feel like I need the post it. <laughs> I feel like I need this post it note to give me strength to uh, overcome hardship and adversity and help everyone be friends again uh, <laughs> therefore I decided you know what I'm just I'm just having it I'm just giving myself the post-it I it's a good post-it that is very useful in a lot of people I, I I would wish I like had more post-its like like this that I could just give to people wait I could do that I have pink post-it notes I can literally just write hang in there on a bunch of them and have that as a thing. Uh, anyway, hello! I hope everyone's doing well. Oh, and thank you for the immediate hydrate too. Let's start with that. Let's start by opening my can of monster. So, a uh, fun fact. I actually ran out of the Ultra Fiesta um, at the weekend. I had my last can of it. But then as I was getting ready for the stream today, I was like, no. Wait, I need the Fiesta because it's Caprice Root. I need the blue can. So I bought one from across the road. Actually, that's a lie. I got, uh, my mum was going across the road and I asked her, asked her to pick one up for me. £1.75 for it. Like, <laughs> for a single can of Monster. I was in pain. I was suffering. I need to buy another pallet of them. But, <laughs> but yeah, just, just for one can of Monster. It was... I It... I really have taken it for granted, the fact that I keep buying them in bulk, how much it actually costs to buy them from the shops. I, was, I feel like I'm, I'm becoming like an elderly person now. I'm just like, back in my day, you could buy a can of Monster for a pound. <laughs> but I got one. But I, oh, my <laughs> oh my goodness, Bob. 
You didn't have to do that. I was going to order it for myself anyway, but oh my goodness, thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's like I'm still all right for a little bit because I have the white cans. I've still got all of the, the white can monster from like the last order I made as well. It's just the, the fiesta I ran out of. But oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you! Let me have a sip of my, 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 the only fiesta I have in the house at the moment. I've got it. Anyway, before I start like rambling about the prices of the, the shop across the road from me, <laughs> I should say hi to everyone properly too. But above, hello, congratulations on the first. Now that you're not on holiday, you can start actually getting the first again. <laughs> But hello, lovely to see you, and thank you so much for the monster as well. Thank you, I really appreciate it. And oh, okay, given that you slept badly, oh, I hope your sleep improves soon. I know the pain. The pain of um, not sleeping well. I, I've actually, I actually slept well last night. Although I say last night, I didn't go to sleep until 4 a.m. But I slept through until 12, so I got like a solid eight hours of sleep, and I was like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It was, it was like a... I, I don't remember the last time I had a solid eight hours of sleep. <laughs> also, Addy, hello! Tupal Tuesday! Thank you so much! Oh my goodness, the 42 months sub! Yeah, I, I know it's super late for you, so I, I appreciate you dropping it. Thank you so much. And also Icy too. Thank you so much for the reset for 19 months as well. It's it's almost on to like the 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 two at the, at the front of the um double did I I I was trying to say something cool then and it just kind of fell apart before I even said it. But thank you so much. I really appreciate the resubs. Also Suzume, hello as well. Thank you. Thank you for always being here for, well, for the, for the, for everything, but specifically the gay times. <laughs> Welcome, I hope you're doing well. And Akira as well, thank you for the snake laugh. Welcome, testing my sound alerts before I start. Because sometimes they don't want to work, but they have been working pretty well recently, which is very nice. And Lyra, hello. I see you there in chat too. Yeah, it's the, it's the, the white can monsters that you got me as well. <laughs> I still have quite a few of them left because I've just been, I've just been having the fiesta constantly. But uh, honestly, like the fiesta feels really good for summer. It feels like a very summery monster. But I think next time I make an order, I'm I'm gonna get myself some of the Rosa again because I really do love the Rosa. And it's been a little while. I feel like I've gotten into a routine of just like getting loads of one flavor and having nothing but that flavor for a while, and then moving on to the next one. <laughs> Oh, Bob, you got yesterday a similar situation. You ordered yourself one, and then a few got you one from Throne. Oh, that's so good, though. That means it's gonna it's gonna keep lasting you. And I I still need to send you some as well. Like I've I've been meaning to send you monster for the longest time in return, and I've I keep like every everything has happened so much. Twenty twenty four has been a, a bit of a nightmare year for me, but it's gonna happen one day. It's gonna happen when you forget about it the most and then suddenly you'll get a parcel and be like, wait, but I'm not expecting anything. And it's just from me. <laughs> just monster. But yeah, I was like genuinely amazed that I got eight hours sleep last night. It's I don't remember the last time I got a solid eight hours sleep. And I think the fact that my room was finally below 25 degrees Celsius probably helped. Also my new fan my new fan I just kept it on all night very low and I I didn't wake up I actually woke up two minutes before my alarm was due to go off at 12 <laughs> and I was I I felt like I felt like a god honestly you know like the incredible moment when like you pick up your phone and then it goes off after you pick it up and you're like did I do that do I have psychic powers? Did I do that myself? <laughs> it's, a, it's really fun to me. Also, Jack, hello, thank you for the eight as well and throwing things at me. Welcome, welcome. Happy Tuesday. But yeah, I hope everyone's been having a, a good start to the week. I have been having 
a, a little bit of a stressful time at the moment trying to return this air conditioning unit because uh, I've been trying to return it for about two weeks now and the delivery company is just not coming to pick it up. So tonight I have to, I have to deal with customer support reps. So I'm not looking forward to that. Which is why I'm very glad it's Twofold Tuesday and I don't have to think about that yet. Not yet. The, at the moment, it's uh, someone else's pain, not my own. <laughs> For your birthday, you say? No, hopefully before your birthday. Just a random surprise, like September. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, the mix of customer support and the UK postal system. It's... See, it wouldn't be that bad, but the delivery company they're insisting on using is every. And for anyone who doesn't live in the UK, basically every is a delivery company, which is known for not delivering things. Like that is the reputation. They used to be called My Hermes. They had such a bad reputation as My Hermes, they rebranded to every, and the reputation somehow got worse. <laughs> Like, they don't pick things up, they don't deliver things, they don't update the tracking. Uh, three times now I've had uh, tracking information that said, um, we tried to pick up your parcel, but the packaging was insufficient, and they didn't even knock on the door. Like, I was there refreshing the tracking page. As soon as it updated, I looked out the window, there's nobody around, they weren't here. <laughs> So I'm now at the point where, like, I've had three failed collections. Like, three active failed collections that weren't just, like, ghosting and no tracking. Like, they actually updated the tracking for all three of them. So now I have that as leverage to actually get a decent delivery company to come collect it. <laughs> but I wasn't able to do that until I had the three failed collections. And I wasn't getting the failed collections because they were just ghosting me. <laughs> So it's been a nightmare, and it's been a little bit stressful too because um, the the money for the refund was kind of like tied up in that too. But uh, that's that's at least something that's dealable. Like the money side of things has been dealable thanks to friends. Thank you, friends. <laughs> but yeah, it's been it's been a time. It has been such a time, and I I will just be really glad to have this thing out of here because the parcel has been sat in the hallway for two weeks. <laughs> And it's really big. We keep having to, like, maneuver around it. Huh. But it's okay. I have my nice fan now, which I have I have noticed such a difference in how I can deal with the heat with this fan. Like, it still gets really warm in my room, but when I have the fan on, I can deal with it. Like, it's not an unbearable heat. It's a bearable heat. <laughs> it's like, ideally, it would not be heat. But if I if I can handle it, like I don't mind it getting warm if I can like survive through it. So the fan has helped with that. So I'm I'm so I'm so grateful to my my biggest fan. <laughs> it's a nice fan and it's a quiet one too. I have it on right now and you can't even hear it. It's so good. I specifically bought it because it was listed as a as a silent fan and I was like, "Oh, Less than 30 decibels, you say? I don't believe that, but I'm going to buy it anyway. And it actually is amazing. Uh, now that I say September, yeah, it's... What day is it today? It's the 6th. It is a month until my birthday tomorrow. <laughs> I refuse to believe that. I, my birthday has rolled around so quickly. I have nothing planned. All I know is that I do want to do a birthday stream. I, I've got nothing planned for it. I, I need to start thinking of things. It's probably gonna be... I think on the Sunday? Sunday the 8th of September, because that's the day after my birthday. And I usually stream late on Sundays anyway, so that feels like it would be a, a good time to, to do my birthday stream. But yeah, I've got to start thinking of what I'm even going to do. Also, Caps, hello! You're awake barely, but you're here. Oh, I'm glad you're here. It's okay, I'd, I'm doing the, the pre-stream yapping anyway to make sure you don't miss anything. Especially for you. <laughs> but thank you so much, hi! And Milo, thank you for the good luck as well. <laughs> it's very appreciated. I'll, I'll figure something out. Happy birthday right now. It's, it's not my birthday yet. 
It's just been Tiffany's birthday. It was Tiffany's birthday last week. She's 12 now. Like, uh, the thing is with Tiffany, she was a rescue cat. So we don't actually know exactly when her birthday is, but it was estimated to be early August. So we decided, all right, you know what? I'm naming you after Tiffany from Girls' Generation. Tiffany from Girls' Generation's birthday is August the 1st. You're sharing a birthday with her. <laughs> so now we celebrate Tiffany's birthday on August 1st. Because we know it's like around that time, so it's close enough. But yeah, and she got, yeah, she got a birthday present from Barb as well. Because the, the catnip rainbow arrived. And when it arrived, I had a moment of like, oh, you know what? I'm going to save this and give it to her on her birthday. And she was, she loved it. She was so happy. It was really nice. Oh, yeah. And Tiffany and Olive share a birthday. It's, I love that so much. I love that, like, I, I was, I was told that Olive's birthday was uh, August 1st. And in my mind, I totally did not connect that that's also Tiffany's birthday until, like, later on in the day. And I was like, wait, they share a birthday. That's so cool. They're all, they're both very cool as well. So it, it's, it's always so fun finding out when uh, fictional characters share a birthday with you. I think I share a birthday with a, with a Genshin character. Like a, th which, which Genshin character is it? September 7th, Genshin. Chongyun. Yeah, I, I share a birthday with uh, Chongyun from uh, Genshin Impact, who's like the ice boy. I never got to that part in the game, so I don't, I don't actually know who the character is, but I always think it's so cool. I'm just like, yeah, we're birthday buddies. <laughs> the cold one, he melts just like me, yes. Oh, the, the the shared mod brain cell as well. I love that. But, oh, I... Wait, I just realized too, like, Addy, you're gonna be heading to bed. Caps is just waking up. The cycle continues. The power of time zones. Someone is always awake somewhere. <laughs> but, yeah, I also share a birthday with, uh... Oh, my goodness, what's her name? The red string of fate character from Idol Master Cinderella Girls. Is it Mayu? I think her name's Mayu. Yes, Mayu. Sakama Mayu from Idol Master Cinderella Girls. I share a birthday with her as well. <laughs> and she's a, a very pink character, but she also scares me a little bit. She's very, very uh, pa passionate. Very passionate. Uh, yes, Yandere is probably a better word for it. <laughs> But yeah, she's she's um she's not as scary as some Yandere characters, but she definitely has her moments where like I I look into her eyes and I have to look away. <laughs> but yeah, I always think it's really cool finding like shared birthdays with fictional characters. And also non-fictional characters too. I think who else do I share a birthday with? Is it Gloria Gaynor? Yeah, I also share a birthday with Gloria Gaynor, <laughs> which is very fun. But yeah, I remember a post that I saw on the internet a while ago, and it was a silly meme post. And it basically said, uh, look up celebrities who share a birthday with you. Uh, one of them is going to be the assistant you have in the zombie apocalypse. Do you survive? And... It, it, like, it set itself up for me. <laughs> I just... I was immediately like, well, I have Gloria Gaynor, so I will survive! <laughs> so I'm fine. I'm sad. And then, um, it was either my mum or Xander got, um... I've forgotten her name. The actress who plays Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Ah, oh, I've forgotten her name. I'm so bad at this. Sarah Michelle Gellar. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah Michelle Gellar. Yeah. Shares a birthday with Xander. And Xander was just like, yeah, I'm fine. I've got Buffy. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I don't know why it, the name just fully went out of my head. For some reason, I had Jennifer Love Hewitt in my head. And I was like, that's, 
that's a different woman. That's so wrong. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jack, you got HP Lovecraft. Oh, yeah, you're kind of like reversing the apocalypse then. Or maybe you you, you caused the apocalypse. <laughs> but yeah, you'll be fine. You'll be on if you're on the side of the apocalypse, you're probably good. <laughs> but welcome, welcome. I <laughs> hope oh, you've got Richard Nixon. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, it's it's always really fun to look up. But uh, anyway, uh, I'm I'm talking about things a lot because um, last time I played this, uh, we started Caprice Act Three. And it's shaping up to be quite the chapter. Uh, you've also got David Walliams. Oh, that, that, that would be interesting. Uh, no anime characters you know have July 1st. Except a Kenoda Gunso character? Oh, wait. Wait, that surprises me. I would have thought July 1st would be a popular birthday. Hold on. Give me a second. I want to look something up very quickly. Wait! Wait, Milo, you, you share a birthday with one of my favorite Idolmaster characters, uh, Kanade Hayami from Cinderella Girls. She's so cool. She's so great and cool and amazing. And her birthday is July 1st. So you share a birthday with her. <laughs> oh, oh, Jack! And uh, also Linus Tech Tips. Wait, that's, that's amazing. Uh, you know who you share a birthday with? I, I feel like you probably share a birthday with some very cool characters, Bob. <gasps> no, Addy forgot Canada's birthday. No, it's okay. What you do is uh, you'll s you just use the whole year to make like a fully poli polished art piece for next year and be like, the reason why it's two years late is because it's beautiful. <laughs> It's okay though, I also forgot to celebrate Frederica's birthday this year. I'm a sham. I'm a sham Cinderella Girls fan. She's one of my favorite characters in any kind of media. And I forgot to celebrate her birthday. But it's okay. Yes, Canada is one of Addie's favorites. It's great. I, I, I love... One of the things I really love about Idolmaster is... That there's so many characters <laughs> so there's probably one you share a birthday with it's great may you post link yes please do please do you are welcome to post as many links as you like I i'm pretty sure it should let you pretty sure it's set up so it'll let you yes there she is <gasps> yes oh my goodness you did the one with frederica too <gasps> yes hold on let me show it on screen let me show it on screen very quickly There they are. <laughs> Canada's the one with blue hair. Frederica's the blonde one. And Freddy's my favorite. Fure-chan. I love her so much. She's been one of my favorite fictional characters for a very, very long time. And I actually have a little, like, merchandise shrine set up to her. I've got so much Frederica Miyamoto merchandise. I love her. But look how cool they are. Look how cool they are. I love them. Oh no, this is the this is the official art from the game. But uh, Addy has done some really beautiful art of them too. It's so good. Yeah, it's it's how me and Addy actually became friends. Like we knew each other through like adjacent circles and then we bonded over our shared love of Idolmaster Cinderella girls. <laughs> and that's how we started talking more. And uh, the rest is history. We've we've been friends but I, I'm not going to think about the years because time is fake, but it's been a while. But yeah, I love it. I love it so much. Like, honestly, I miss the days when I was like really heavily into Idolmaster because it was, it was fun. There's something so fun about just like a shared love of idols. It's, I love them. <laughs> but yeah, the... Those are, uh, uh, Frederica's birthday is also Valentine's Day as well, so it's, it's another reason why I have, like, no excuse for forgetting it. <laughs> I 
Oh, this one's so old. Oh, the, the link doesn't work. The, the link is showing as forbidden for that. Hold on, what if I open it in like incognito tab? No referring URL. No, it still doesn't work, okay. One sec. Oh, no one shares your birthday. Oh, it's Susume, what, what day is your birthday? Which, which day is it? September 27th? Da, 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 da. Oh wait, no, there's 26th and 28th. Oh my goodness. Why is the, why did, why is there no one for September 27th? That's so sad. Oh, there also isn't anyone with a birthday on September 8th as well. I was close. Also, Bob. Oh my goodness, wait, you share a birthday with Elle. That's so good. <laughs> Elle from Death Note. I love that. Wait, sorry, I, I missed the comment because I was I was distracted by idols. <laughs> but that's that's a great person to share a birthday with. I love that. Uh, Death Note was like one of the first serious anime shows that I watched. It's it, it was like how I became an anime fan. Uh, funnily enough, I, I actually remember it really vividly uh the way that i got into death note was i found i'm pretty sure it was a game on newgrounds i was looking up random dating sim games on newgrounds and i found a random death note dating sim game and i looked at the series through that and like the the series is nothing like the game i played the game i played was a very like almost au but not quite like very like apart from the events of the show. So I went into Death Note knowing a little bit about these characters through this random game I played. And then suddenly it was just like, oh yeah, this this guy is killing people. Oh, okay, all right. I'll, and I actually really enjoyed it. There's the link, yes. Oh my goodness, I remember this art. I, I have a print of this, I'm pretty sure. Is it this one? I'm pretty sure I have a print of this, hold on. Where is it? I do. I, <laughs> I think I'm pretty sure I have a print of this. It, yeah, I do. It's it's on the side of my bookcase. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, next to my um uh analog I hate story print as well. I've had those prints on the side of my bookshelf for a while. That's so cool. But yeah, let me let me show this quickly too. Let me resize it very quickly but yeah I remember when you drew this and it's just like oh my goodness look ba -ba -ba, look how pretty it is it's like even the art from so long ago although it's so so interesting to me looking at this and seeing how much your art style has like evolved and adapted and grown like I'm I'm a fan of all of your art, but like you when you when you place this next to like things like my model. It's so cool. It's so cool. I love it. But yeah, I, I actually have a sticker of some Addy art of uh the subunit lips from Cinderella Girls, which is my my favorite subunit in the whole thing and they deserve more. I want more content with them. Also, Suzume, wait, you, you share a birthday with Suzuha from Steins Gate. That's amazing. I don't know when the Steins Gate uh, birthdays are. Oh, I, I love finding these things out. I, I, I kind of want to just make a huge long list of every fictional character I know that shares a birthday with me. Even if it's like characters I've never heard of. <laughs> but yeah. You're right. Me and me and Addy share a trait where if you start us talking about Item Master Cinderella Girls, that that's the end. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The yapping continues. I'm. I feel like I'm a very like incognito idol fan. Like a lot of people don't realize like how heavily I, I'm into fictional idols. But then like you bring up the topic of one of them, and then suddenly that's it. I'm, I'm off. I'm having a great. Time. <laughs> 
I love idols. I love them. They're great. I also never bought into the fan wars. Like, there was a, a period of time where it seemed like everyone on the internet was like, okay, you either like Idolmaster or you like Love Live, and then they are enemies with each other and you can only choose one side. And I was just kind of sat in the middle like, okay, okay but, but no. But no, I like them both. <laughs> I like them both. Yeah, and then it's, it's not just fictional idols too. It's like, I really like J-pop idols. I've met a few. Uh, I, I went to like, I went to a Juice Juice concert in London a, a very long time ago. I really like uh, Hello Project groups. I really like J-pop idols. And also I'm, I'm a huge K-pop fan. Everyone knows that. Like I'm, I'm, I'm jopping every day. It's <laughs> oh, I actually had a beautiful moment earlier. I left my phone downstairs when I went to get lunch. And the next thing I know, there's a knock at my door. Uh, Xander uh, is up here with my phone, handing it out to me, and he just went, your phone was jopping in the kitchen. Because <laughs> I have it set as my alarm tone. <laughs> and the alarm went off and I'd left my phone downstairs. So just suddenly out of nowhere, jopping started playing in the kitchen. And it's just kind of become a term now that we use it's just like oh yeah your phone's dropping just a very matter of fact thing because it happens so often <laughs> but yeah anyway um i love idols i got very distracted but it's okay it's caprice time <laughs> i'm also gonna have another sip of my monster because i want to Anyway, yeah, I love idols. One day I shall become the idol. One day, when I actually release a song cover. One day. It's okay, I look out for my birthday. Wink, wink. Things may be planned for my birthday. I, I, I lie, I say I didn't have any plans for my birthday stream. I do have one plan. A thing that I am working on. Milo knows what it is. Addy also knows what it is because I sent it to her. <laughs> But uh, the plan for that is going to be my birthday. Birthday release of a very serious song cover. <laughs> but oh, thank you so much, Addy. I hope you sleep well. Thank you for the idle distraction. But yeah, it's, um, it's just a little thing. But I figured if I can start releasing little things, it'll make the bigger ones feel less intimidating. If I already have something like under my belt, so to speak, like I've already done something so it's basically like I feel like at the moment my main problem is I am trying to step right to the top of the stairs without taking any steps in the middle this is gonna be my first little step on the stairs to make it so that the top is not an um, impossible goal to reach <laughs> anyway feelings feelings time no wait me alone. Yeah, uh, recently I've been, uh, I just finished watching The Dragon Prince, which is a really, really cool Netflix show, which I really love. And I've been watching it with The Cabbage Garden, and we just finished season six of that yesterday. And that was an emotional time. So I'm ready for another emotional time. I'm here. Give me all the cathartic tears. I'm here for it. I'm ready. Yeah, the stairs, I'm taking a step. Instead of jumping and being like, well, I didn't reach the top, I give up. I'm actually taking a step and I'm proud of myself for it. Oh, that's why you started doing 3D art for people. So you can fake it till you make it. Wait, but you're not faking it. Your 3D art is great. <laughs> it's not It's not fake if it actually looks good. Like that's, that's just um, practice and progress. <laughs> but yeah, it's... Uh, it's always good to just, like, create things. It's something that I say to other people and then I don't take the advice on board myself because I'm silly. But it's always better to create things than to create nothing. It's, uh, it's actually the phrase. Uh, the phrase is like, if, if something's worth doing, it's worth doing badly. The first time I heard that phrase, I was like, well, that sounds silly. 
because if it's worth doing, you don't want it to be done badly. That's bad. But it wasn't until like actually fairly recently that I realized the meaning of that phrase is actually like, if something is worth doing, then it should be done anyways, because even if you do it badly, it's better than it not being done at all. Like, doing something at a low level is better than just not doing it. And if you always go like, well, this isn't going to be perfect, therefore I'm not going to do it, then you don't do anything. <laughs> so it's all about just like doing little bits, like building up. Just create. Even if you think it's awful, you'll, you've still created something, and the next thing will be better. And then the next thing will be better than that, because you have more practice, etc., etc. So that's, that's what I'm doing. I my, my little puns. <laughs> But yes, oh, thank you for the luck as well. Thank you for the luck, Milo. I hope you have a, a good rest of your Tuesday as well. Yeah, we're in this, we're doing it. We're doing things. <coughs> oh wait, Lyra, it's also Chica's birthday. Oh my goodness, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Yeah, oh, thank you for the bits. <laughs> they are very appreciated. But yeah, it's, it's just good creating. Not everything needs to be perfect. Yes! It's also like, it reminds me of a thing I see a lot online as well, which is just like, it's a, a comic that someone made and it's an analogy that's just basically like somebody's made a cake and then they look at like a professional cake from a, a five-star bakery next to them. And they're just like, well, my cake is rubbish next to this cake. Nobody's gonna want my cake when this one's right next to it. And then another person walks along and just goes, oh sweet, two cakes. <laughs> it's like, and it's also the thing like, look, the other cake might be really fancy, but maybe yours is made in a flavor that another person prefers. Like everyone has different tastes. Just because somebody else is a professional doesn't mean that doing something non-professionally won't appeal to anyone. It's it's always worth making that cake, basically. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, I'm ready to continue act three. I'm so scared. <laughs> I love that I called this page Caprice and everything is fine. Everything is fine. This scene is called Making Distance. I'm not worried. I'm a little worried. Because I've got to say, one thing I find really interesting is the fact that Millie's act two was very full of despair. It was very negative. And then Millie's act three was like more her coming to terms with things and things looking up. Caprice's has been the opposite way around. Caprice's act two was all about her hope that she could fix everything, everything getting better. She was so sure that this was going to work. And her act three is her like, sinking lower and it's it's so it's so much it's so much it's so much yeah exactly if, if you compare yourself to people who have been like doing this their whole lives and you've only just started practicing then th it's you're probably not going to be as good as them until you like get a bit more practice build up that skill level it's it's always bad comparing yourself to other people because, like, there's... Unless you are, like, the most perfect person in the entire universe, there's always going to be someone out there who's better at something than you are. <laughs> and that's fine. That's not a problem. Like, someone else being better doesn't mean that you're not good. If that makes sense. Anyway, let's... Let's start uh, making distance. Although I suppose if it's just distance between Millie for a while so that Millie gets her space that's not too bad I've got a feeling it's not gonna be about that though anyway Caprice and everything is fine making distance ah uh, here we go the quiet sounds of the evening make their way through my window heard despite the TV absently playing I tap away on my phone drowning out whatever rerun is showing tonight Okay, we're still, like, in contact at least, so that's good. I was a little worried that 
Caprice would like fully shut herself away, but it, we're still talking. And she's saying, BRB, gonna help with the dishes real quick? Five men's tops. Sure. Have fun. Fun with the dishes, yes. Our texts to each other over the past day have been short but almost non-stop since she arrived. To the point where I'm almost worried I'm distracting her from her stay. Also, Maya, hello! Welcome, welcome! Ah, uh, yeah, it's one of the cardinal sins of any creative work. It's so true. It's... It's like... It's, it's always really painful if you start comparing yourself to others because, like, especially with creative things, you don't want to be exactly the same as somebody else. Like, the point of creativity is having your own element to it. So you don't, you don't just want to, like, fully mimic somebody else to the point where you're not actually creating for yourself. <laughs> but hello, welcome, welcome. On her end, she's quick to bring up conversations about absolutely nothing, and she's always ready to reply within a couple of seconds of me sending anything, no matter how inane. I put my phone down, confident I'd have at least a few minutes while she was away, but to my surprise, my phone buzzes not long after. I'm initially impressed at how quick she got her chores done before I pick up my phone and realize it's not her. It's Haley. Oh. <laughs> I love Haley. I love Haley. Howdy. How's she doing? All settled in yet? Ready for visitors? <laughs> I stare confused at my screen, trying to decipher Haley's strange joke. Hmm? Mm hmm? What are you talking about? Uh, your girlfriend? <laughs> Still what? On cue, the doorbell rings. Well, to answer your question, Haley, no, I'm not ready for visitors. <laughs> well, too late. Oh, oh. Hello? They think Caprice is here, don't they? Did Caprice actually tell them that she's going back to her mom's or do they think she's been here the whole time? I... Ugh. I open the door just barely to see Millie and Haley. Millie looks at me with a painfully forced smile, a small tote bag in her hands, tilting her head slightly towards me. It's us. Just oh, came to drop off a couple no. of housewarming gifts. Um, and uh, talk to Caprice, uh, of course. She didn't tell them. I mean, like, we, we know that. We already know that. Like, she didn't tell the art club. Of course she didn't tell Haley and Millie. Like, the last they know, she stopped off here. They probably just thought she's been staying here if she's not been going home. They don't know. Oh, I... Ow. Ow. It's cold. Let us in. Oof. My apartment isn't much warmer, but I concede enough to let them in before closing the door behind them. I turn back towards them, trying to figure out exactly what's going on. As Millie walks through, she calls out to the empty apartment. Caprice, it's me. <laughs> and Haley. I was thinking about that painting, <laughs> and, um, I think you were right. Wanna hang it up together? Immediately, immediately pain, immediately, instantly. Oh my goodness, okay. Huh. <sighs> yeah, me too, Olive. 
Is she really just going to pretend nothing happened after all of that? Oh, is, is Olive gonna get mad now? Caprice! Hmm, did she head out or something? Uh, I don't have any other plans tonight if you want to wait for her. Sure, we can... She's not here. Millie and Haley snap out of their own personal worlds. My tone surprises me, too. Yeah, it's, <laughs> this is such a mood. It is such a mood. Oh, it's so painful because this is, this is like what Caprice wanted. But it's happening... Like, she's not recognizing how much harm she caused. Because even if, even if it's unintentional, even if you don't mean to hurt someone, if you hurt someone, that hurt doesn't vanish. You can't just, like, pretend it didn't happen. Oh my goodness, yes! In Millie's route, when Millie's ready to talk to everyone and Olive has to straight up stop her from ambushing her exactly like this. Oh my goodness, you're so right. But she doesn't have an Olive to stop her in this situation. Oh my... What? Yeah. Wow. She's at her mom's place. She stayed the night here after a club, but left the next morning. It didn't run into each other? Or... Did she just, like, not pick up any of her things from home? Or did she lie? Did, did she say she's staying here? We came home to an oh, unlocked no. door after a grocery run and thought we got robbed or something. Oh. The only room that looked disturbed at all was hers. She told us she was going out for a little while last we spoke, so we just assumed. Yep. Just assumed she'd be fine. Just thought things were okay, just like I did in Millie's route. I'm... Ow. Huh. Uh, I also intended this to be like Millie maybe not having the full realization that she did in her path yet. Yeah, her saying you were right about the painting actually is more like, okay, I'll give you this. Can we go back to normal? Yeah, it's it's not like a full, full recognition moment. It's I I, I get the impression it's because Millie can see how awkward it is and she doesn't want to deal with that. So this is like her, like, okay, I can use this as a stopgap to, like, put things back to the the tentative okay that they had before while still not dealing with anything. It's, it hurts. It hurts. Going out for a little while. She didn't tell you anything? Of course she didn't. Obviously, if she did, we wouldn't be here. Of course Caprice didn't tell them everything. Every time Caprice tries to speak to Millie, Millie starts an argument or shuts her out. It's... <laughs> if this is how the two have been trying to solve things, it's no wonder their argument has gotten to this point. Yep. Yep, pretty much. Yeah, just trying to put a band-aid on this situation. Yeah, it's... It's, it doesn't, it doesn't work if you don't treat the, the root cause. Sanyamita, hello, thank you for the hydrate and posture check. Let me have a big stretch. Ah. Uh, yeah, okay. Sorry, that, that was like a, a vent my frustration stretch as well. <laughs> but you know, like sometimes when you stretch your arms up really high and you're just like, uh, you just kind of want to make a noise with it. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I just like making weird noises. <laughs> but thank you for the hydrate too. And welcome, welcome to Pain. My favorite. And you thought that the best response to her trying to make some distance for a few days would be to barge in here without any prior warning and scare her into a conversation? Oh, the parallels. Oh, the parallels. This is... Because that's kind of what Caprice was doing when Millie was trying to make distance her. Is she going to recognize that now? Ooh. It was my idea. Ah. 
It's nothing she hasn't done before to me. She's the one always saying problems need to be solved face to face. Oh, see, that gets me too. The way Millie here is like, it's nothing she hasn't done before to me. Remember, remember how much you hated that? Remember how much you really despised that? Do you get it now? <laughs> uh, the reversal is so... Oh, it's, it's so interesting and also painful. You know it's different when someone is asking for space, right? You of all yeah. people should know that. On top of that, coming in here like nothing happened... Do you have any idea how horrible she feels about Christmas? Do you want her to just pretend everything's okay? Yeah, nobody realizes just how much it devastated Caprice. And it's like, sadly, I think that is because Caprice always likes to like put on that positive attitude. Like, I feel like she's a very fake it till you make it kind of person. Like, if things are going badly, she'll just pretend they're not until they're actually not. Like, just think of the best, very optimistic. But because of that, people always assume <laughs> that she'll be okay and she'll just bounce back from everything. But, but this is like, this was a big thing. I don't think Millie realizes just how big it was. Like, just how hurt she got. So I hope she can realize here. You never try to explain anything, and when we do finally get you to open up, it's all a big contradictory mess. <laughs> and here Millie is. After screaming that she wanted Caprice out of her life, she's here sweeping everything under the rug and trying to make amends with a portrait that she hated just a few days ago. Yeah. Kinda wanna cry right now. Honestly, that's been me through this whole game. Uh, this this game is a very emotional game. It's like, if if you don't feel up to dealing with like the, the conflict and emotions and stuff, I, I will say ahead of time, like I fully understand if you have to go lurk, if you, if you want to like step away from it. But at the same time, if you do want to stick around, it's really healing, like, it hurts to begin with, but then managing to sort things out and resolve it, and like the conflict resolution, it's so cathartic. It, it, it really makes like, the pain worth it. it. That's kind of a weird way to word it. I don't think I worded that properly. <laughs> but it's, I, I find it very healing. I find this game very healing. Also really good for, like, realizing things about myself, honestly. <laughs> hey. Don't you hate me, Haley? You know I'm right. Haley's voice is cool, but there's an edge of warning to it. I feel the lingering need to say more, try and make her see how much she's hurting the people around her dissipate. At the same time, my phone buzzes off. I take it out, trying to give myself a moment to collect my thoughts again. Back, all the little, the little spy faces. Ah! Nah! You there? Oh no, six minutes. Oh my goodness, that's so long. Olive. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's fully understandable, Barb. Thank you for stopping in though, and thank you so much for the monster again. I, I really appreciate it. <laughs> But I hope you have a good luck. Have a lovely rest of your Tuesday as well. And uh, if if you're feeling really bad, just know they will work things out. And it is going to be okay. And I can say that with confidence from the bottom of my heart. So, <laughs> so at least there's that to hold on to. But yeah, it is, it, it's it's a lot to go through, so I, I fully understand that. But thank you for lurking. You there? I was trying to figure out what this was for a second, and I realize now it's like a little blob with a question mark. I thought it was like smoke to begin with, like a, like a soul escaping. <laughs> but it's not. Also, I love these emotes. Yeah, sorry. I take a deep breath. Obviously, they're here to talk to Caprice. I won't ask her to oblige, but at the very least, I want to give her the chance. 
I know I'd want to know if someone came looking for me. Hey, you free to talk right now? Like, over voice, I mean. What's up? Gonna give her a call. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask first, though. You know, common <laughs> etiquette stuff. <laughs> Bob. A Bob. I, I meant more like like a Bob, barbed wire strike. Like, not the cool Bob, a, a painful Bob. <laughs> My frustration is starting to, to subside, but it looks like just enough managed to hold on for me to... Oh, but it looks like just enough managed to hold on for me to glare a couple daggers at the two. Eventually, my phone starts ringing. Guess that's a yes. It doesn't take me more than half a second to answer. Hey. Oh, the... Oh, but the gentleness in their voice when they pick up is... I'm so glad Olive exists. I'm so glad that Olive... exists. Fred and Larry, they're a fictional character. I'm so glad Olive exists. <laughs> yes. Ooh, I love them. Hi. It's so good oh. to hear you. It's been such a busy day. It feels like it's been forever. Haley and Millie are perfectly still, as if to avoid Caprice's non-existent gaze. So, what's up? Just miss my voice that much? Um... It'd be nice to chat if you wanna for sure. But I'm actually calling because I got some guests over. Ha. Oh. I feel like she can probably guess. Seems like that was enough to clue her in on what's happening. I turn my head back to the two home invaders, only for Millie to avert her eyes. Yeah. But they were worried you ran away or something. Yes, I did. Mm. Even if they're a fictional character, they still exist. Yes, thank you. They're, they're real. I specifically told them it was just for a mm. bit so they wouldn't worry, but I guess I just made them your problem instead. Oh, no. Sorry, Ollie. It's okay. That's fine. Olive, can you put her on speaker? Not unless she wants to be. I'll ask. Hey, Caprice. Millie wants to talk with you. Do you mind if I turn the speaker on or pass my phone over or something? Please don't. Mm -hmm. Please. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought her response would be. What a mess of a situation this is. Millie looks at me expectantly for an answer and all I can do in response is shake my head. Her shoulders slump. I just... I really don't want to talk to her. I thought I was doing the right thing, and after... Well, you know. Yeah. I think it's better this way. Mm. Millie and Haley must have either heard themselves or noticed my face start to droop as they try to get in closer. I'm quick to turn away, making sure Caprice's request is honored as best I can. This... don't try and eavesdrop in a conversation like this! Leave the room! Leave the room! Oh my goodness! I... Is it just me? Like, if I... If I'd had an argument with someone, someone else was on the phone with them, I asked to speak, they said they don't want to, I wouldn't be immediately trying to eavesdrop. What? <sighs> so, this is probably going to be more than an overnight stay, huh? Yeah, probably. Oh. I was thinking more like two weeks, maybe longer. I see. I should have been honest mm. with you about it. Sorry, I, I wasn't really sure until I got here. Yeah. On the bright side, you can come visit anytime you want. There's some moving boxes and stuff, but it's not too far from your work. I can hear the shift in her voice, attempting to move the conversation to something happier. 
I hope she's doing it for her own sake and not mine. That sounds nice. Oh. Just send me the address and we can figure out a time. Sure thing. Mm. Oh, but if you come, don't bring Millie with you. Haley either, actually. I feel bad that she's been lumped into this too, but, you know, it'd be awkward. Yeah, that's understandable. At least not yet. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I gotta see them off, so give me a few minutes. We can pick up afterward. Oh. Okay, love you, bye! Love you too. And with a click, she's gone for now. I put my phone back into my pocket as I spin around, spin back around to the two. Well, she's fine, don't worry. But she needs space. Well, there's that at least. I'll be visiting her in the next day or two. Pretty much whenever I get the all clear. Uh, I'll drive you. No. Nope. I'm just going to take the trolley. You not being there was the one caveat she gave me. Ow. But that's... probably to be expected. Yeah. I don't want to keep the two apart if there's any chance of mending this bridge, but I'm not about to betray Caprice's trust to make it happen. Yeah, I... I, I don't think it's time yet. I... Caprice needs this space for a while and hopefully Millie can realize just how hurtful things got over Christmas yeah yeah mm. I'm counting on you then great thanks just what they need thanks thanks for the great I don't really think I can do anything except be there. But honestly, in this situation, I feel like that that's enough. That's that's Caprice just needs to know that there's somebody there at this moment. Like when we think about this moment in Millie's Act 3, Caprice did not have anyone checking in with her. Like, Allison was too worried about bothering her and didn't get in contact. Eileen and Wallace were just kind of like, well, I don't know what's going on and didn't get in contact. Uh, Millie and Olive obviously didn't get in contact. Haley didn't know what to do and didn't get in contact. So Caprice was like completely on her own at this time. At least, at least here we know she has Olive. She has the connection with Olive. And they're like, they're texting every day. They're still like in communication with each other. She's not completely isolated. And that makes me feel a lot better about the situation, knowing that she's not like fully alone. Like, and like, I say that too. I know she has her mom, she has Charlie, but it's, it's a little bit different still than like a peer relationship versus like a, a parental relationship like it's it's slightly different <laughs> so i'm th ooh, ooh. that'll be enough hopefully yes i think it will the three of us take a collective breather the frenzy of the last few minutes taking their toll once the mood starts to settle back into something resembling normal the two start for the door see you later you know how to reach me if you gotta. Yeah. Yeah, and at least this time around, Millie has Haley too. Yeah, because Millie hasn't left the apartment. They're, they're still roommates. They're still living together. They still have the connection there too. So, because part of me was like worried about Millie dealing with this situation. Not considering that Haley would be like a bit more active like this with Caprice not being there. It's really interesting how things can change so much just from a a few a few small things. <sighs> Will do. Something is still bothering me. I hope I can communicate better than earlier. Millie, 
Do you have a second? Millie stops at the door as Haley exits, and they both look back. After exchanging a look, Millie nods, assuring Haley she'll be right there. If it's about barging in here, I'm sorry. Wallace said she had left mm. with you after the club, so I just... It's not about that, no. I sigh. As much as her finding things out through gossip with Wallace isn't really the ideal scenario in any reality, it's not the main issue. Look, I don't want to tell you what to do. You and Caprice mean a lot to each other, right? Yeah. She hesitates, but doesn't deny it. A small nod is all I get in response. I can't imagine what you're going through. I'm sure Caprice can't either. But I know it can't be easy. But this hiding behind a smile, running away from everything and then blowing up over and over again, it's not sustainable. I am so glad that Olive can say this to Millie. I am so glad that Olive got this moment to be able to express this to Millie. Millie needs to hear this. Millie needs to know this. Whatever you need, I'm sure Caprice will try her best to provide it. But if you don't tell her what it is, she's just going to keep guessing and guessing, even if she gets it wrong. And it's like she's trying her best. But when she's guessing and getting it wrong, and then Millie's blowing up over her doing the wrong thing, like, just, just tell her you need some space, and Caprice will give you some space. Just tell her you're really struggling and you don't want to talk for a week, and Caprice won't talk to you for a week. She's that kind of person. She just wants the best. But she just doesn't know how to do that. She's not the type to give up, but... At some point, she might. She's not invincible either. Yeah. Even after all this... That's all I wanted to say. I really hope Millie's taking this in. I really hope. Millie clams up, something I should be used to by now. She doesn't leave immediately, though, glancing down towards the floor. I'll see you around, Olive. That's as best as I can hope for right now, I guess. A couple of small waves and a closed door later, I'm alone. My phone is silent for the first time all day. I resign myself to turning in early, hoping naively the extra sleep might somehow fix how I'm feeling. Yeah, sadly, this isn't a good night's sleep kind of solution problem. <laughs> Whew. The next day. <sighs> this music. Oh. Alone on the trolley, it feels so strange. So strange. Also, I, I really do love their scarf. I, <laughs> when I heard an orange scarf, I was like, oh dear, but it's I feel like this is a really nice scarf. It's like a a very like natural colour palette. It's a lot of nature colours. I like that. It suits Olive well. Last night was a smooth transition from laying in my bed staring at the ceiling and eventually dozing off once the sky began lightening. I managed to get about three hours of shut-eye before the buzzing of my phone. It was easy for me to push through the exhaustion as I was rushing out the door, but after a long and unusually crowded trolley ride, I'm finding the exhaustion slowly catching up with me. I'm on my way. Excitement. I'll be waiting. Yay. Still got like 20 min. Exactly. See you soon. <laughs> Caprice's complex stands rather tall, sandwiched between two similarly sized buildings. 
I follow her directions thus far, and the layout isn't too dissimilar to mine, so it doesn't take me long at all to navigate its corridors. Now comes the hard part. Oh! There we go, yeah, she- there's the hair. There's the hair! <laughs> I knew it! I knew it. However, I've got to say, it's very nice seeing the hair and the smile. <laughs> As opposed to last time, when the first reveal of the hair was with the most miserable expression. <laughs> I nervously ring the doorbell, only for it to swing open almost immediately. On the other side is Caprice. It's only been a little while, but the last couple of days have dragged on forever. Hey! Come in, come in! Hi! It's been a million years! Hi! She takes me by the arm and pulls me into the apartment without a second of hesitation. I should have figured she wasn't over-exaggerating. She really has been waiting. Right by the door. Mom! Ollie's here! Be right there! Caprice shouts in the general direction of their hallway before doubling back to close the door behind us. I rub my eyes, trying to get the sleepiness out of them. My eyesight has been bleary, sure, but... She looks... different, doesn't she? Yeah, not sure what it is. I, I really love Caprice with the the blue tips. I, th I think it looks so cool. How was the trip? Cold? You should really bundle up more, you know. <laughs> you say as Olive is wearing a big coat and a scarf. Says you. <laughs> a hoodie isn't a coat. It is to her. I'm in warm. <laughs> me too. <laughs> oh, me too. Same hat, Caprice, except neither of us have a hat on. I am the same. I I don't wear coats. I, I'll i just throw on, like, a, a light jacket or a cardigan or something. That's my coat. <laughs> Is she going to bring it up? Should I? Uh, so... You look nice, by the way. Oh, right. This. Yeah. I didn't realize you were being serious when you brought it up before. It looks really good. Yeah. <laughs> I... I didn't really realize it either, but, you know, I just kept thinking about it. And I just really wanted to change, I guess. Yeah. She absentmindedly plays with a few stray blue streaks, twirling them around her finger and admiring them. I feel a small pang of sadness at how much I dismissed the idea at first. It's okay, you didn't realize. I resolve to make sure I don't do that again. Seeing how happy the little change has made her despite all of this stress, I wish I could have been by her side to make it happen. <laughs> Bless Olive, that's so sweet. I hang close by, not wanting to disturb anything. I have to lift my elbow a bit as I move aside, trying to avoid toppling over any boxes. Anyway, thanks for coming. I- oh, shoot, sorry. Caprice's phone starts going off, and she holds up one finger in a small motion and glances at it. Who dat? Who dat? Who was phone? Also, Gregor, hello! Welcome, welcome! Welcome on in, welcome to, um, happy fun times with a side of emotional devastation. How's it going? Happy Tuesday! Her face falls when she looks at the screen. Rather than answer it, she cancels the call. There's very few options of who it could be to give her such a reaction. Caprice avoids my gaze. Look, if if Millie is trying to call Caprice after we actively said for her to not, I'm gonna be very cross. I can give you some space if it's important. Nope, not at all. Mm -hmm. 
Her phone buzzes a few times in her pocket. If she's purposefully been doing this, the surprise visit last night makes a lot more sense. I can't comment on it though, as not even a moment later, Charlie emerges from a small door in the hallway. Hi, Charlie! She, settle she sets down some packing tape on a nearby shelf as she approaches. <laughs> Me too, Suzume. Me too. Hi again, Olive. Nice to have you. Sorry for the mess. It's fine. You're moving. It's understandable. Hi. Ah, don't worry. I've seen worse. <laughs> It'll get worse before it gets better, I'm afraid. How have you been? It takes me a second to come up with an answer that doesn't feel dishonest. And another to get over how both Caprice and Charlie are staring directly at me, putting me in the center of attention. Great. My favorite place. Uh, you know, as well as anyone can be. Yeah, considering. I understand. I ended up hearing about it last night when Caprice was asking about you coming over. The mere mention of it is enough to have Caprice divert her eyes from Charlie and I. It doesn't seem to stop her mom from addressing it all the same. I figured you just wanted some space when you came over unannounced, which is fine. But please don't do something like this Aww. without telling them. Millie must be worried sick. They found out in the end anyway, <laughs> it's whatever. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, let me give you the grand tour. Master of deflection. I look to Charlie. The atmosphere of the room rests entirely on her. She catches me staring, quickly masking her melancholy with a smile. Go ahead. This place is tiny, though. I can't imagine it being all that grand. Any tour can be grand, if you do it in a grandiose way. <laughs> oh, this must be really hard for Charlie as well, though. Because it's like... This is her fiancé's daughter, and her daughter, and also her best friend's daughter, who passed away. It's it's very awkward. It's so awkward. Oh, I feel so bad for her. I just want to give Charlie a big hug. I learned my presentation skills from the best. It'll be great. Yes, tour guide time. Okay, okay, sure. Lead the way. Caprice grabs me by the hand, leading me approximately three feet into the living room. Despite Charlie's skepticism, Caprice finds no trouble finding a story for each and every tiny knickknack still hanging on their walls or sitting on their shelves. Even the everyday and mundane has a memory attached to it. Oh, I love that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Charlie's deceased best friend's daughter. Like, it's... <laughs> It's so awkward. In so many ways, it's so complex. We end up flipping through their small collection of movies, a wave of nostalgia flooding over the two as they take turns looking over each and every one. She loved that stuff with the animals. <laughs> Always put on the same DVDs again and again. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Caprice does seem like the type of person to put a song on loop for five months. <laughs> What can I say? I liked what I liked. And if I didn't choose the movie, Mom would put on something boring. Like a cartoon? <laughs> exactly! You're bad luck! <laughs> you only got the boring episodes. It doesn't take long from there to move to their kitchen area, consisting mostly of the usual appliances and a small table tucked away in the corner. The place is already tiny, but it feels like we lived exclusively in the kitchen Aww. a lot of the time. That table, specifically. The homework table. Ooh. Ugh. <laughs> same hat. Same hat. No hat. Same hat. Reminds me of the countertop back at your apartment. I don't think I ever got a chance to see it without it covered in books and notes. That's kind of cute, actually, that, like, Caprice always grew up with, like, the kitchen table being for homework, and she's kind of just carried that through with the rest of her life as well, just like, well, this is the kitchen counter, therefore it's for homework. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Caprice walks on over, taking the seat closest to the wall before beckoning me to join her. The cushion on the chair feels flat, undoubtedly from years of use. Charlie opts to stay standing, idly putting dishes away. Yeah, Charlie's grin when she said that. I love it. Look, there's still a weird warp from that time I spilled juice and covered up with a plate so Mom wouldn't see it. <laughs> Caprice rolls her hand over a slightly lifted part of the table, patting it proudly. She must have hit it really well. Do you cook? Charlie makes a so-so motion with her hand and laughs. I didn't really have a lot of time to learn. We had to wake up early to go to work, and by the time we got home, it was already bedtime. Yeah. Takeout was our best friend. I see. It did let us spend some quality time together at the end of the day, since we didn't have to worry about dishes or anything. Anyway, I didn't get to babysit too often for that same reason, but I always made sure Caprice and Millie both had snacks on hand whenever I could. The name has been mentioned. Is Caprice gonna change? You were basically a pro. Oh, she you could have given Ollie a run for their money. Oh, I was wondering if the mention of Millie might affect Caprice, but it, it doesn't seem to have, so I'm I'm happy. Olive would have been around six <laughs> or so. I don't think it would have been very fair. You know what I mean. He... Well, not to brag, but I do think I've mastered the art of instant chocolate chip cookies. That's a very good art to master. Millie always used to tell me that was the best mm. part about coming over. Oh, she's mentioning Millie herself now. I'm hoping this is a good sign. Oh, did she? That's the first I've heard of it. Mm -hmm. I remember her always being super excited about coming to visit. Charlie laughs as if remembering a joke. I think that says something bad about me. Mike was always a stickler for healthy snacks only, wasn't he? <laughs> Oopsie. Well, it wasn't all bad. His snacks had their own charms. Now I'm wondering what the heck the snacks he made were. Don't try too hard to convince yourself. Oh. I know how much you hate pears. Me too. Me too, Caprice. I, I really like the taste of pears, but I can't deal with the texture of pears. They're so grainy. It's like the one fruit that I don't enjoy eating, which is a shame because I do love the taste of pear. I think te pears taste lovely, but I can't ever eat pears because of the, the grainy... They they always feel like they've kind of been like coated in sand to me. Like it's, it's that horrible kind of... Bleh. Pears are just worse apples. <laughs> Just like, we have apples at home. The apples at home. Yeah, apples are way better. I'm a big apple fan. Mostly, the... Um, I was about to say red apples, but I think the kind of apples I like... I don't like the green apples. Unless they're, like, in cooking. I don't like the really red apples. I like the ones that are kind of like in between. They're kind of like reddish yellowish apples. Those are like the prime tasting apples to me. Those are my favorite apples. Uh, think things should not taste like dust if they can help it. Me too. Me too. Fully agree. You're an Asian pear fan. Oh, do they have a different texture? I don't, I don't know if I've, I, I, I've never tried a pear that didn't have like that that grainy feel to it when you're eating it. But yeah, I'm, I do love fruit a lot, though. I, I feel like there aren't many fruits that I don't like. I'm very easy to please with fruit. I just really like fruit. I'm trying to think. There was, like, one fruit I tried once that I didn't like. I think it was, like... Was it, like, dragon fruit? Dragon fruit or star fruit? I, I feel like those are two different fruits, but it was one of those that I tried once and I didn't like it. But I, I just really like fruit in general. Uh, I like green apple as a candy flavor, but not so much as an actual fruit. Yeah, I'm like, I, I will eat green apples if there's nothing else around and I'm just, I just fancy an apple. But I feel like they're, I prefer them when they're a bit more sweet. Like the greener ones are a bit more tart. They have a bit more like tang to them. If that makes sense. 
Oh, there's a soda company that makes green apple soda and the carbonation makes it feel like you're biting into an apple. Oh. Oh, wait, no, I've, I've tried some really nice, like, carbonated apple stuff. Like, things like Appletizer. I really love those drinks. I love those so much. They're so nice. Oh, that's how you feel about melon. Yeah, I love melon flavored stuff. But not so much like the actual fruit itself. Yeah, I always think it's interesting when, like sometimes there are artificial flavors that taste exactly like the fruit. And then other times there are artificial flavors where you're like, okay, yeah, this, you know that this is listed as this fruit, but it is very much not. But I still kind of like those too. <laughs> I just like sweet things, mostly. Very easy to please with anything that's sweet. Their conversation is vague and personal, but my imagination can fill in the blanks. I see it clear as day. Caprice and Millie sitting here, scratching away at some doodles or a math sheet, nibbling away at whatever Charlie prepared for them that day. Mike coming in to pick his daughter up, maybe staying a bit longer for dinner? and doing it all over again another day at the Clark's house. I don't need a first-hand account to see how much of a family these two homes really are. I guess Millie disagrees, but I wonder if she looks back fondly on those times regardless. I miss those days. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the real thing tastes too much like artificial sweetness to you. That's interesting. Although, like, I'm trying to think about it. I feel like the only melon I tend to eat is, like, the uh, the yellow ones. Uh, like, honeydew melon. And even then, it's like, I feel like it has a really mild flavor to it. I just really like eating it, like, when I don't want to have anything, like, too with too much flavor of <laughs> just want to consume but i i do like the texture of melon i like i like the texture of eating melon depending on which one it is but i don't like them when they have too much flavor i like the ones that are like not not as flavorless as watermelon i feel like watermelon is very like i probably wouldn't go for it even if it was offered to me but yeah, I do like, I think it is the honeydew melon, but I like those. Aw, oh, Shy Pie, hello! You drank a dragon fruit watermelon beverage yesterday. It tasted like salt, citric acid, and pennies, then left a greasy feeling in your mouth. That sounds so refreshing and lovely. Mm. I wonder if dragon fruit's the one I tried and didn't like. I think it might be, actually. Like, the one fruit I have tried and just been like, no, I, I can't eat this. <laughs> But oh, uh, welcome, welcome. Oh, nostalgia. Me too, sometimes. More than sometimes lately. Ah, <sighs> oh, I feel like we're eating two completely different fruits. You've never heard watermelon described as flavorless. Unless it's like overripe. It's very possible that I've only ever tried overripe watermelon. Because <laughs> it's not really like a common fruit here, I think. Like, I feel like it's more common in the US. I don't think it's like a, a thing that's easy to find over here. And I've, I've only tried it a couple of times in my life. And he, both times I was just like, eh, whatever. Hold on, I kind of want to look this up now. Sorry, the midstream yap distractions. Watermelon, UK. Um, the first thing that comes up if I search Watermelon UK is a list to Tesco Groceries Watermelon, and it has a rating of two stars out of five. So I don't think we really get good watermelons imported here, maybe. <laughs> I it's, it's not like a common thing. It's like... I. I'm, I'm always really, I find it really interesting when I see a lot of stuff in media that's always like having watermelon in the summer, like smashing open a watermelon, all this watermelon related stuff, because we just kind of don't have it here, or at least I don't. I, I can't speak for everyone in the UK, obviously, but yeah, it's not like a, a common thing. 
And I think it's quite expensive too. Like to actually buy a watermelon here, it's like, it doesn't feel worth how much you have to pay for it. <laughs> anyway, back to nostalgia. Occasionally I sit here and, oh, and remember, wait, I just noticed this little frog too. And I love that. I love that. She fidgets with a fork in her hands. Well, wish it was a bit more crowded. Mm. <laughs> she and Caprice shift their heads downwards in almost perfect unison. It used to feel a lot bigger. Yeah. Because you used to be a lot smaller. Hey. A smile returns to Charlie's face as she drags the mood back onto its feet. I'm more than willing to do my part. She's not exactly very big now. <laughs> nice, make fun of the fact that you're both taller than her. <laughs> hey, it's not like you're a giant yourself. <laughs> I tussle her hair and she weakly swats me away with her hands. Little blue highlights peek out at the movement. It really is cute. Taller than you. He. She makes up for it with pure energy. Very true. Tell me about it. I wrap Caprice into a hug and she squeezes me tightly in return. I hear her phone vibrate in her pocket again, but she makes no attempt to even glance at it. Come on, I'll show you my room next. Yeah. She grabs my hand and begins to lead me away. I'll finish cleaning up. Take your time. Aww. I love this. I love this room. This is such a Caprice room. This room is just incredibly Caprice, and I love it. Caprice's childhood room looks about what I expected. Blue from top to bottom. Guess she's always been consistent about that. The various posters and canvases littering her walls don't stick out as a surprise either. If the living room is anything to go by, I'm sure the numerous toys and other bits and bobs all have their own story. So much otter, yeah, and just all of like the aquatic creatures in general, like we got a little seal lamp or walrus, walrus seal, not sure, we got the little bear, we got a shark, we got a little penguin over here, we got pizza, the, that famous marine creature. <laughs> I love them! I love all the little details. Ah, This is just so cute. I love it. Just how I left it. Nice. More penguins. Even the bag! Wait, that's such a cool bag! Oh, I love that bag. Nice. Well, since moving out in general. Obviously I was sleeping here the last couple of nights. Yeah. I would hope so. <laughs> it's very you. Could have swore your favorite color was orange, though. Ha <laughs> ha. Har har. <laughs> yeah. She sits on the bed as I walk over to a desk stuffed in the corner. There are papers scattered on it, from old schoolwork to sketches. The entire desktop is like a moment frozen in time. <laughs> that's not a pizza, that's a pizza crust sea slug. You're, you're so right. I can't believe I, I mistook it like that. I'm a sham. <laughs> hey, did you draw these in high school? I hold up one of the papers filled with figure sketches. Yep, I took art classes back then too. Yay! Oh, check this out. Ooh, what are we checking out? The otter, yes! I join her on the bed as she grabs a plush otter, warm and uh, worn and well-loved. Mike got him for one of my birthdays Aww. when I was little. Mom said I refused to open any other presents after, and since then they've always joked about how they could never top it. The best present of all time. Her voice begins to shake as she gently strokes the otter's fake fur. Mm, okay. 
Is it talking time? I think it might be talking time. I didn't take him with me when I moved out for college. I guess I took the idea that he'd always be there for me when I came back for granted, but now that... Yeah. She allows that train of thought to hang in the air while she tries to find the best way to end it. The silence is eventually broken by a small sniffle and then another. Oh, mm. no. Seeing Caprice cry makes me want to cry as well, honestly. <laughs> She opens her mouth to speak, but that only manages to fully shake her resolve as tears start streaming down her face. She buries her face in the toy in a vain attempt to mask her weeping. Hey, you okay? You got this, Caprice. I love Caprice so much. She's so good. She's so good, and I want to protect her with my life. <laughs> it's... I'm fine. Said nobody who's fine ever. <laughs> from Millie to Olive, from Olive to Caprice. Uh, yeah, the, the, the post-it note's making it to everybody eventually. <laughs> It's just, you know, I have to decide what to take with me before we tear this place apart. Take all of it. All the furniture, oh. all our stories, everything. So it's not my room anymore, and this isn't our home anymore, and, mm. and... Oh, it's gotta be hard. Because to her, it's like all of the memories are here. It's like taking the memories down but the memories will still stay even if the the physical location stays you still got those you still got those right here right here and also in here and here and here and here and otter around here somewhere she buries her face into me into me now trying to do a better job of stifling her crying I had seen her at her lowest the past few days. Or that's what I believed until now. Is this how she always handles it? I wonder how much Caprice has cried lately. Is it a lot? Or is it only because she's been keeping it in all this time? I don't ask, only comforting her with an embrace. After a few moments, she murmurs. Wanna go for a walk? Yes. Sure. Her phone buzzes loudly. More text messages. She gives a frustrated sigh, but still makes no move to attend to it. I want to know who's sending these text messages. Who is sending these messages? I want to tell them to stop. I want to tell them to cut it out and give us some space. Like, I... I... The girl. Okay. Can you wait outside my room for a minute? Okay. You got it. Take your time. Thanks. Mm. <sighs> she wipes her eyes on her sleeve as she lifts her head up from my shoulder. I leave her with a small smile and exit quietly, giving her space to recompose herself. I wander to the living room. Charlie's sitting on the sofa, the grim expression on her face telling me she must have overheard the most important bits. Everything all right? Maybe not right now, but I, I think it'll be okay. Yeah, uh, we're going for a walk. She just needs a minute. It's hard, you know, leaving this place. Yeah. Caprice says she's happy with how things worked out between Mike and I, but she's really suffering from the effects of it, too. Oh, and so Charlie and Mike are going to feel guilty about causing this situation in the first place. 
they're gonna be second guessing like should we have not gotten together would that have fixed things but it's it's not no no it's okay it's not your fault everyone thinks it's their fault Ugh. moving isn't ever easy even after doing it a few times i always miss things about the previous place yeah See, I've only ever moved house once in my life. And when I moved house, it was, uh, I basically moved from my childhood house to a house on the other side of the town where I live. So, like, if the town is in the middle and I lived at the north of the town, I moved to the south of the town. <laughs> like, that kind of thing. So, I didn't even move very far. But, honestly, like, just the packing and the unpacking and figuring out where things need to go is so difficult and honestly like the hardest part is the moment when you are moving out and selling the house and you kind of have to like depersonalize everything it felt so weird in those last moments like seeing my house in like neutral colors none of the detail none of the the things that made it home it was just like a shell of the house that I knew and it was so strange it was a really weird moment like seeing this seeing the building and being like I recognize this I lived here but this also is not the house I lived in it was very very strange and then like moving into the new house and everything there was so impersonal and just like empty but now we've like we've started decorating it we've filled it with our things like my you walk in my room and you're like yeah that's my room walk into the living room it feels like home it's like the in between part is always so difficult and strange but but yeah it's interesting oh you can't relate at all since you never moved oh yeah it's such a such a weird weird situation to be in like it's it's just the moment of like seeing like your home but it's not got all the things in it that make it your home it's it's the kind of thing that's hard to imagine unless you have actually done it and been through it <laughs> but yeah I, I really like where we live at the moment though it, it feels like a home there are things i dislike obviously like my inability to have an air conditioner set up anywhere but um but it like i've really managed to like personalize my space to feel like my space and i like that but yeah it's it, it's always tricky and also just packing and unpacking is just awful it's just, it just is not fun i really liked the game unpacking I hate unpacking in real life. I my my whole room still has like cardboard boxes with things in them that I need to find places for that I still have not gotten around to. It's <laughs> never ends. It's been like 10 years now and I still haven't unpacked all my belongings. <laughs> but it's okay. Yeah, oh, closest you can relate is moving out for college the first time. Yeah, it's like it's kind of similar as well, but not to the same extent, because like if if you still have like your your home to go back to afterwards, you don't have the whole like depersonalization part of it. Oh, no, I guess you do have that when you're moving out of the dorm room, like when you finish living in dorms and then you have to like take down all of the things that made it your place to head away. It's it's such a. An, an, a weird moment. A really weird moment. But yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to realize I haven't opened this box in 10 years. Do I still need it? But I do. I do. I'm a sentimental person. I, I have so many belongings where like, even when I have big clear outs of my room, I'll be like, okay, well, I need to keep this because of all the fond memories I have attached to it. And I need to keep this because I... I still really like it. So it's, it's, it's like, even though I don't use it, I still like having it. It's the kind of stuff that like, I would be devastated if I moved out and got my own huge house and had a place to put everything. And I had gotten rid of that thing. Like I would be fully devastated. 
<laughs> the main reason why I I keep a lot of stuff. It's just stuff that I I like owning for myself. But yeah, I, I do have a lot of stuff I do need to clear out, though. Like, if I think about some of the boxes under my bed, like, mainly the ones filled with random anime merch that I bought at conventions, I should probably sell that stuff. Should probably get rid of that stuff. I'm... I don't care about most of it anymore. <laughs> but it's just such a... So much work. I, I, I'll do it one day. Maybe in, like, five years from now. <laughs> Anyway, back to game, before I get even more distracted. But yeah, it's it's always weird. It's, it's like the in-between moments that are the weirdest. Like, it's fine once you've settled into the new place, but when there's like that in-between lack of personalization, that's always the, the weird part, like the liminal space of moving house. <laughs> Still. The good outweighs the bad for her, I think. <laughs> Larry's house clearing auction stream. <laughs> no, it's rubbish stuff. It's like I'm trying to think. Like I've I've got like random random keychains for for anime idols that I don't care about, but like I used to be the type to just want one keyring in a blind box set, so I would buy the entire blind box just to get the one I wanted and then I'd be left with all of the other ones and in my mind I was like well I'll just sell the other ones and then that just didn't happen no maybe I could do that that could be quite funny actually just be like hey is anyone a really big fan of this random niche idol from Idol Master Cinderella Girls <laughs> could be funny it could be funny maybe maybe that will happen actually that's a good idea. Maybe I talked myself into it. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. Uh, haha. Oh, I know, I know. I just find myself wishing more and more these days that Aid were still here. Oh. Yeah, it's gotta be so hard for her too. Like, she lost her best friend. On top of all of this, she lost her best friend as well. That's... She has to deal with her own grief as well as everyone else's grief. That's not easy. I can almost hear the second part of that sentence. If she were here, none of this would have happened. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Zarok, hello! Thank you for the hydrate. I need it. I need the sippies. I need to replenish the tears right now. Thank you, thank you. And the posture check too. Let me sit up straight. Have a big stretch. Oh, I kind of feel like I need to sneeze, but I don't think the sneeze is going to happen. Oh, this is a horrible situation. I hate the feeling of being about to sneeze and then not sneezing. So painful. But thank you for the drive-by care package. I appreciate it. Thank you for stopping in, Zarok. I hope you sleep well. Happy, um... Happy Wednesday. <laughs> Can't help with that. There's no sneeze redeem. Well, I... I wouldn't know how to sneeze on demand. How would I, like... Maybe just, like, get pepper or something? No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> but no, I, I, I don't know how to sneeze on command. I wish I did. It would make things a lot easier. But uh, I've been very sneezy at the moment because Tiffany has been leaving a lot of fur around the house because it's been very warm and she has a lot of fur. She's a very fluffy girl and she keeps dropping these like huge clumps of fur everywhere. So that's that's not helping like on an aller allergy front. <laughs> and also I probably could do with dusting my room again. I'll probably do that tomorrow because I'm not streaming tomorrow. I'll, I'll take it take a day to like sort my room out a bit honestly all the talking about like moving and belongings and stuff is making me want to do like a big sort of my bedroom which is a really bad idea because that's gonna take me weeks but I'm feeling motivated now I want to I want to organize things I want to figure out what I can get rid of clear out some of the clutter a bit 
and also find places for all of the things that I want to display. Things to do tomorrow. Big, big clean up tidy. Thank you for the doot as well. She responds with a long, heavy exhale. The Quark house was always a second home. Mm. We'll eventually be fine. Mm. Millie, though, I'd give anything to help repair that bridge if she'd let me. I know, it's... Mm. She's going to have to accept what's going on. Doesn't matter if she wants to or not. Hat. We got hat. Caprice has emerged from her room, bundled up in her usual winter wear. Yes, her hoodie coat. A couple sketchbooks are thrown under her left arm, with a megaphone occupying her right hand. What are you planning? What is she planning with this megaphone? You know what? I trust her. Uh, whatever you want to do. Stand in the middle of town and yell through the megaphone. That's fine. If you want to do that, because it's you, I would let you. Caprice. I tried to get her to understand. What if she's just gonna, like, yell in Millie's face? Just yell everything in Millie's face through the megaphone. Hmm. We've done everything we could, Mom. She doesn't care, so we shouldn't either. Hmm. No, it's not... She does care, though. The... She does care, that's the painful part. I thought our friendship meant more to her, but I guess I was wrong. I give up. No. I won't let you. I'm not gonna let you give up. I refuse to let you give up. Also, hi, Dr. Anime! Welcome, welcome! The three words I never expected her to say finally leave her lips. My chest hurts, and Caprice's nonchalant tone twists that knife further in. I don't think she wants to give up. I don't... I'm, I'm not gonna let her give up. I refuse. I'm, I'm not gonna let her give up. Caprice, hey. I don't think she really wants to give up. She's just going through it. You don't mean that. Mm. The shock in Charlie's voice betrays any sense of confidence in that sentence. A cold pall sweeps over the room as Caprice shrugs. I know she's been calling you all day. Can you imagine how alone she feels right now? Mm. How she feels? What about me? What about you? We have each other, Caprice. Mike is here for us, and Olive is here for you, too. She only has you. Mm. Had? She made it plenty clear she doesn't want me in her life, Mom. She said so, word for word. She... It was a stressful night for everyone. Everyone says things they don't mean sometimes. When emotions are high. Stop trying to make excuses for her. She can't just lash out all the time and expect us to just... Another phone call. Ending her thought with a grunt and whipping out her phone only to turn it off, Caprice turns towards the door. Whatever. Wanna go, Ollie? Yeah. Caprice gestures towards the door with her head. She avoids direct eye contact with both me and Charlie as she walks past us. Well, yeah, I'm not letting her go off on her own, so... <laughs> uh, sure. Not, not in this kind of mood. Not, not in this situation. Where are you going? For a walk. Just down to the pond. We'll be back later. Okay. Take care. Stay safe. Will do. See you. Out the front door, she begins to walk down the road, still clutching her art supplies. She walks fast, so I try to keep close. Okay, not long after. Are we at the park now? I don't remember a pond being that close by. Or at least I didn't see one on the way here. 
The supplies under her arms shift and threaten to fall, but she has no problem adjusting as many times as she needs to, holding it all close. What's with the extra stuff? Just in case. I thought we could have a little club meeting of our own. Maybe we'll find some inspiration out here. This would be so lovely if it wasn't on the back of everything else that's going on. <laughs> At a pond? Yeah, draw the ducks. Draw a little duckling. Yep, it's not far. Agree to disagree. I somewhat wish I had my bike. And the megaphone? Oh, that's for screaming. It's... <laughs> I have a lot to get off my chest. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Understandable. She picks up her pace. I trail slightly behind. My heart is racing a bit. It seems right that she should want to vent, but a part of me is wanting to talk now. I won't push it, but as she continues to avoid my eye contact, the worry remains and the need to at least check in wins over. Hey, everything all right? Not really. <laughs> yep. Mm. Sorry about earlier. No, it's... You shouldn't apologize for crying. Mom shouldn't feel guilty about Millie, you know? It's not her fault. I don't know if it's anyone's fault. Mm -hmm. She swiftly turns around to face me. How not? It's um... Millie who... No, forget it. Come on. No, don't forget it. Don't forget it. We need to talk about this. Ugh. She resumes her walk. I jog a bit to return to her side. After some time, we enter a small area just outside the residential neighborhood with trees and a pond. A trail circles the body of water, with benches dotting it here and there. We used to come here a lot. It was my ideal drawing spot growing up. It's pretty. She finds a seat on a nearby bench and begins sketching in one of her books. The megaphone rests next to her, still in reach. Mom and me. Sometimes Grandpa, back when he was around. Sometimes Millie, her family. She used to draw a bunch, you know. Most kids do, I guess. Some just don't stop. Yeah, I used to draw all the time when I was younger. I would just, I would doodle on everything. I was a chronic doodler. If anything you gave me, if I had a pencil and a piece of paper, I would doodle on it. Just like absentmindedly, just one thing I always used to do was I always used to draw like spider webs in the corners of my page. I'd do like the do, 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 and then draw lines connecting them and then draw a little spider. I'd also do a lot of flowers. I'd always doodle flowers and hearts, and also swirls. I really like doodling swirls. I'd do like really long swirlies. Good times. She wanted to come today. Mm. Good thing you stopped her. I pause. In a way, I feel like the worst thing I could do right now is sit here and agree. Yeah, like, Caprice is in give-up mode. Agreeing with her is going to just reinforce the give-up attitude. And that's that's not what we want. That's, that's not what Caprice needs right now. I wouldn't say it's just my newfound optimism, but something in the way Caprice glares down at the ground, her fingers gripping her sketchbook tightly, makes me think she wants to be wrong. Yeah, I don't- I don't think she wants to give up. She feels like she has to give up because nothing's working, but she doesn't want to. And I don't think she has to. I steal my resolve, but offer a s soft touch to Caprice. She doesn't move away, so I brush away a stray piece of hair from her face. She wanted to talk. What else is there to talk about? She wanted to argue. No. She didn't. She glares towards me now, but it's strained. I smile a bit, trying to offer whatever sense of ease I can. It didn't sound that way to me. 
What else is there, Ollie? What else can I even say or do or... <sighs> yeah. She slams the sketchbook closed, tossing it back atop the other she brought. I tried, Olive. I tried to work things out. I did what I could. I... She buries her face in her hands. I reach out to touch her shoulder, and just barely she angles herself towards me, her voice laced with an anger that colors how small she looks in this moment. All I'm good at is shoving people around. No one would give me the time of day otherwise. No. Oh. Millie hates me. Haley avoids us a lot of the time. The club doesn't even want to meet anymore. No. Uh, they literally planned a dinner for you, Caprice. They planned a dinner to apologize because they felt bad. I... Oh. She's trying so hard and she has to deal with so much. I feel so bad for her. I, um... I promise you, none of that's true. How can you even say that when you were roped into the club yourself? That was even worse. Oh. I was just taking advantage of your personal problems to get a small step up in this dumb fight. Oh, the pain. It was still my decision in the end. Yeah. So was everything that came after. And they didn't have to stay in the club now, after passing the year, unless they wanted to. Like, that's an active choice they made. And look where we're at now. It's been a rough few days, but that's only because I hate seeing you like this. You've been nothing but good to me. It's so painful because you know, you just know how how passionately she just wants the best for everybody. So for her to misunderstand things so much is so devastating. She just wants to help. She just wants things to be good. And she, I think, you know what I think the problem is? I think Caprice needs more acknowledgement for everything she does. She does everything and nobody ever acknowledges how much she does, how much effort she puts into things. She is so passionate. She's so dedicated to everything. And people kind of take it for granted. Everyone's just kind of like, well, that's just how Caprice is. I don't think she gets like the acknowledgement or the thanks that she really deserves. And because of that, she doesn't think anyone appreciates what she does. And I think, like, now that she's in this state and not providing this, it's helping people realize, like, hold on, she does do a lot, doesn't she? She does put so much effort into things. We have not been appreciating her enough, have we? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm very... I'm very passionately supporting Caprice. I want I want to support her with all of my being. I'm Dare I say it I'm on side Caprice here. <laughs> like not to pick sides or anything, but if if I were to pick a side, you know. <laughs> Which is like it feels like it's saying a lot too considering how much I adored the Millie route. I think I'm on side Caprice. Like, if I had to pick one. I think. And why does it feel like nothing I do is good enough? It is. It is good enough. It is good enough. <laughs> Not to imply Caprice's canon, but Olive does have a green streak in the hair in the OST art. Curious. How very curious. <laughs> Honestly, I'm... Like, the more I'm playing through this, the more I feel like... I like both of the paths, but I'm, I, I really, I love Caprice. I, I love Caprice. Also, Dr. Anime, thank you for the hydrate too. I need, I need more drink. 
I need more sips to replenish my tears. <sighs> Thank you for the hydrate. And oh, this is one of the scenes you've listened to very often. Felt the pain every time. I know it's... It's just the fact that, like, Caprice is... She's such a sweetheart. She's just such a sweetheart. She does so much. And nobody appreciates her enough for it. I I want to just, like, throw her a party every day and tell her how proud of her I am. I'm like... <laughs> uh. Why does it feel like I can't get through to anyone? I'm so sick of it. Months and months of this. My best friend. <laughs> her voice falters and shakes, and I get ready for her to cry into my shoulder again. Only for her to stand up instead, swooping up the megaphone as she does. Without skipping a beat, she brings it up to her mouth and shouts at the pool of water. Why don't you get it? A flock of ducks take off from the water at the sound, sending water spraying over the edge of the pond and a flurry of feathers behind. Wow, I... Oh. 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 You've always been my sister. <laughs> Haven't I been yours? You hate the idea that much? Okay. Millie has the train bridge scene. Caprice has the pond megaphone scene. I see. Mm. She punctuates her shout with a wordless scream. I wince as the megaphone screeches in protest. Caprice, however, seems totally unfazed by it. Thank you so much for not including like a sound file for that because I, I may have cried. <laughs> You don't know what you've got till it's gone, right? Famous phrase for a reason. Hmm. I just want us to laugh again. To smile, to live with each other instead of around. Why is it so hard? She crumbles, her shoulders shaking, angrily wiping away the tears falling down her face. I don't know the best words or how to say what I mean, so I just keep talking and hoping one small part of it might be enough. I'm tired of screaming. Caprice. What is it, Olive? I wish I could tell her that I don't know either, that I love her so much that I want to be with her and support her but I've said all that already I don't know how to translate how much I care about her into words screw it <laughs> I reach out and pull Caprice into the biggest hug I can she's shivering I wish she bundled up more. I nestle my face into her shoulder and squeeze. The megaphone falls from her hands and into the snow with a quiet thud. <laughs> yeah, God, the, the tired of screaming. Just, uh. Oh, I'm gonna be the same now as well, Suzume. Every time I see the megaphone, I'm because <laughs> I love. I've got the. I've got the Capri standing. It feels so different now. I feel her shift in my hold, slightly moving her face as if to say something. 
I ease up, not wanting to overstep. Don't let go. Okay, I won't. Her words are barely audible as she buries herself into my shoulder, holding me twice as tight. I won't. I promise. I close my eyes and take it in. Her hands grabbing onto my coat. How much warmer it is together. Her exhales slowing from short and uneven hiccups to deep breaths. Occasionally, a spot of freezing wind will shoot over the lake, taking out any accumulated comfort we'd managed to create. Each and every time, Caprice pulls herself close. After one more time, she speaks again. <sighs> yeah, it's kind of cold, huh? Cold? A little. Do you want to head back? I don't want to let go. Just, just shuffle back home like this. Just, <laughs> it's okay. Just stay like this. Don't let go. Just, just do like a little shuffle waddle off to the side. It'll be fine. I feel her smile against me. I don't either. I'm sorry, I have to make silly jokes to stop the tears falling. <laughs> Couple more minutes? Yeah. I rest my face against hers, our cheeks touching. Her face is still wet. I don't mind, but I try and wipe whatever I can away with a small nozzle. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. After some time, we find a way to part, still leaning on each other as we take a seat on the lakeside. You'll now share some heartbreak to the Discord now I've made it past the scene. Oh, if, if it's like spoiler stuff, please still use spoiler tags when you post it. But yes, uh, <laughs> feel free. <laughs> Give me the heartbreak. <laughs> After some time, we find a way to part, still leaning on each other as we take a seat on the lakeside. She asks me if I want to listen. I do. Later that day. All right, same day, but later on we talked. A good talk. I think it's a good talk. Also, I just realized something I have that I've not been using that I maybe could have in this scenario. Caprice, I love you. You deserve the best. I want Caprice to be happy. I got my own megaphone. <laughs> Virtual megaphone, but... Uh... <laughs> we don't return until the sun has already begun to set. We're back. Hi. Mm, a little smile. Caprice's eyes are red from tears. When she speaks, her voice is hoarse and raspy, but she manages a smile. If Charlie notices, she doesn't say anything. Meanwhile, Charlie herself is very obviously attempting to keep a casual air, likely to avoid another confrontation like earlier. She wrings her hands together as she searches for light conversation. You guys have a good walk? Good, yeah. Yeah, I think it was good. I think it was good for both of them. We did. I think so. Yeah. I've got a pizza in the oven if you're hungry. Yes. I'm starving. Yeah, screaming like that uses a lot of energy. That sounds great. Thanks. The three of us have a small, quiet meal together. We chat a bit, and though, though Caprice is soft-spoken beyond just a damaged throat, it feels less sad and more contemplative. At the pond, after the shouting and the crying, we talked for a long time as much as she was able. I'm so glad. 
That makes me so happy. I just felt like a bomb waiting to explode. Like if I stayed back there, just being around Millie would weigh and weigh on me. That I'd be screaming at her and not the pond. Not that I really expected to come here and scream. Her eyes briefly turned to the megaphone, resting in the snow after being pushed to its limits. I'd be amazed if it still works. Well, maybe I did. I don't know. Yeah, I love her just being like, I didn't plan to scream as I carry the megaphone out with me. <laughs> Do you feel better that she did at least? <sighs> I think it might be a situation like the hair thing as well. Like, she didn't realize that she wanted to dye her hair until she mentioned it offhand and then realized actually yes it's what i want to do or what i need to do hmm. not sure kinda mm, kinda's good it's something she kicks weakly at the ground her energy well and truly spent after her shouting yeah sometimes that's what you need it's so true like caprice is so good at like trying to like divert emotions and hide things and bottle it up sometimes you do just need that moment to just let it out just just get it out of there to just fully scream into the clouds like i think she did need that i thought i'd come back home to cool my head or something actually not even really that I didn't have any plans after running away. I just had to leave. I know. It's all right. It's all right. I sigh, thinking over the last couple days. Sorry again about the ambush. I didn't really think they'd go that far. It's okay. That wasn't your fault. You didn't think they'd be worried? Not really. Not enough to chase after me. But they care. They care. Thank you for the head pat. <sighs> but maybe I was hoping they would. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I really... I must sound like a broken record, huh? I think this also ties into like her, how I feel like she's underappreciated. She wanted someone to notice. She didn't want to have to say out loud. She wanted someone to realize it. Which I think is also another reason why she didn't, like, actively tell anyone. Like, a little part of her was, like, almost, like, to prove how much they care about her. Like, in her eyes, it's like, nobody noticed, therefore it's reinforcing the fact that nobody cares about me. When it's not like that. But, like, in, in her mind, that's almost like a test. I think. It's something I've done before in the past, too. It's bad. Don't do it. It doesn't work. <laughs> It's very easy to be like, well, nobody noticed I vanished, therefore nobody cares about me. When in actual fact, it may be everyone notices that you vanished, but they think you want your space, so they leave you be. Like, it's... It's... Th 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 mind games are not good. <laughs> but I understand it. She coughs. Maybe you should rest your voice. I'm okay. As much as she tries to stifle it, a small cough sneaks its way out, immediately betraying her words. She continues on before I have a chance to protest. I wasn't really sure where I stood with anyone. Thank you for coming out here. You're so welcome. You're always welcome. Of course. Do you think she actually wants to talk? Yeah. Without a doubt. She peeks towards me through messy hair. There's the faintest hint of a smile on her face at the assurance. It's there only barely long enough to be noticed before sinking back down into her resting solemn expression again. What if it goes badly? Then I'll be here for you mm. if it does. But try to think positively, okay? I am. Yeah. I give up on her, Olive. 
You say that. I don't think you actually did. I don't think she actually did give up. She's saying that. But, like, I don't think she actually gave up. Never too late to change your mind. <laughs> so true. But she has to make that choice, too. Mm -hmm. I think she may have. I'm rooting for you both. And so am I. If Olive's thinking positively, that's really saying something. No, I, f I feel like Olive is like a surprisingly positive person. Like I went into this thinking Olive was going to be like mostly this pessimistic kind of person. But they actually are fairly optimistic. Like more like realistic. Like, like instead of like glass half full or glass half empty, I feel like they're just like it's, it's half a glass. But they don't immediately consider the worst. Like, the only real pessimism they've had is about themselves. Like, they they kind of worry more about themselves. But when it comes to other people, they do think the best of so many people. It's just really nice. Like, they're just such a lovely, supported person. I love them. I love Olive so much. <laughs> She laughs hoarsely and gives me a hug, nuzzling and kissing me. What's so funny? <laughs> it's just nice to know that at the very least I always have you in my corner. It means a lot. Of course. Yeah, yeah, they're not a pessimist. They just have low self-esteem. <laughs> yeah, I, I think... It's like they're, they're not a pessimist, but they are a warrior. They do worry. They're very good at worrying. Which I also can relate to. I am also a warrior. <laughs> the warrior. I love to overthink things. <laughs> but yeah, they're, they're really supportive, though. They're, they're lovely. They're so good. Uh, well, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm glad you know. As we finish up our dinner, I start thinking about how I'll get home. My body finally remembering how exhausted I started the day. Oh my goodness, yeah, and Olive's been doing this all on like three hours of sleep. They are so powerful. <laughs> oh my goodness, they are going to crash when they get home. Shoot, it's getting late. I should call for a ride or something. I thought you were staying the night. It's New Year's Eve. Wait, it's New Year's Eve? I had no idea it was New Year's Eve. Hello? <laughs> Has it been a week already? With the whirlwind I found myself in, time's become a total blur. I wouldn't want to impose. Plus, I've got work tomorrow. You're not imposing. I could drive you out if you want. You'd do that for me? Sure. Is it in the morning? Ah. Oh, Charlie. You're so good. Yeah. At six. Oh. No. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit early. Both Charlie and Caprice's faces fall at the revelation of my early start schedule. I wish you said so earlier. Oh. I wouldn't have dragged you around all day. No, it's fine. Also, I love that you can hear, like, the the rasp in Caprice's voice as well. After she's been shouting and talking so much. Ah. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's no problem. I can do six. Though, I guess with the distance and the morning routine, it'd be more like four, huh? Hmm. You really don't need to. I know it's a huge ask. Besides, I'd need some cleaner clothes. Clothes swap? Then we'll swing by your apartment first. Yeah. Then it'd just be easier. Don't fight it, Olive. They want you to stay. <laughs> they, they just want you to stay. Otherwise, they would not be talking about driving you back at 4 a.m. Like, they want you to stay. Ollie. Ollie, Ollie, Ollie. It's New Year. They want to spend New Year's with you. Stop protesting. 
Oh, fun fact, you played Caprice Act 2 and 3 on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, respectively. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> the actual timing, wow. She nods her head toward Caprice, who's trying her hardest to suppress a hopeful smile. I was only supposed to help open, so maybe I can see if they'll accept a last second call in, actually. Yes. I'm sure they'll understand. New Year's is usually a lot calmer than Christmas is for us. Yeah, to be fair, I feel like the diner at New Year's probably isn't going to be super busy at 6am. Considering everyone's probably staying up until midnight to see in the new year. People aren't going to be having like a few hours of sleep and then being, you know what, I'm going to wake up specifically to go to the diner for breakfast at 6. <laughs> Although, I don't know, there probably are people who would do that, but... Yeah, not the majority. The, the way she's, like, hopefully rocking back and forth, just like, please say yes, please say yes. Mm, you're the best. Yeah. <coughs> Shush. She chokes on her excitement and starts coughing. Charlie worriedly rubs her back. Are you sure you're okay? She's not okay. She needs to go lie down. She needs to go lie down, have a relaxing, warm drink, and stop talking. And she's probably not gonna do that. Just have a lot to get off my chest. Oh, good now. Caprice spends the rest of the meal animatedly talking about this and that. Stop talking! <laughs> Rest your throat! Oh my goodness. Ugh. Previous New Year's celebrations and her favorite memories. For the first time in what feels like a long time, Caprice is acting like Caprice again. Oh, that makes me so glad. That makes me so glad. That makes me so unbelievably glad. The next day... The owner was kind enough to accept my last minute request and even apologized over having mom come in over Christmas. Though I'm sure they had though I'm sure they had apologized to her directly already. The work can be exhausting, but it's nice to feel appreciated. Caprice said as much yesterday. It is, isn't it? It's nice to feel appreciated. Huh. Even after a full night's sleep, I find myself struggling to stay awake. Yesterday felt like it lasted a hundred hours, and that was before the unplanned decision to stay up till midnight for the ball drop. Thankfully, today has proven to be low energy, not something I ever would have expected in the Shifton household. She's swaying again. <laughs> Caprice and I are sunk into the couch, watching some nature documentary I can barely focus on, while Charlie sits with her phone at the kitchen table. Okay, that's it. Today is now Caprice Capriciation Day. Yes. Caprice Capriciation Day. I'm I'm here. I'm ready to capriciate everything she does. <laughs> She's so good. Oh. A little awkward. We're just getting to the part about a family of seals when Caprice's phone starts buzzing. She takes it out of her pocket through habit and pauses when she sees who's calling. She glances towards me, a look of unease writ plainly across her face. It's Haley. Oh. I'll be right here. Oh. I am so proud of her for answering this. Oh my goodness. She flashes me a quick smile, then stands up as she answers the phone. She walks away as she speaks. Hey, Haley. Mm. Mm. Happy New Year. 
She glances back towards me and Charlie. I give her an understanding nod, and her mom mirrors the motion. Charlie, Charlie. Charlie, you've you've called her Charlie once before. Don't 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 slip back. It's fine. Sure, I have a minute. Caprice disappears into her old room. Oh. Charlie approaches after a few seconds, arms crossed in a guarded way. See, I'm just here like, I really hope it doesn't suddenly change to conversation with Millie without warning. I'm a little worried. A little worried. I hope those girls can work it out. Yeah, me too. Me too. We all do, I think. Yeah. Are you doing okay? Mm. I'm so glad they asked her. <laughs> Charlie blinks in surprise, looking caught off guard at the question. She quickly regains her composure by laughing it off. You don't need to worry about me, Olive. I appreciate the sentiment, though. It's okay, no. I know we don't need to worry about you. We're gonna worry about you anyway, because we care about you. Get aggressively cared about. <laughs> it's still... I don't know. This really isn't my place to comment, is it? You basically raised her, right? Millie, I mean. Charlie's smile falls. She mulls a response over for a bit, but settles for a nod and sad shrug. She's always been incredibly important to me. Marriage or no marriage. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't mean to overstep. No, no, it's fine. If anything, I wonder if... She either loses her train of thought, or more likely her confidence. She shakes her head, groaning a bit. It reminds me of Caprice. Well, I'm not sure. I could never replace Aid. I would never, ever want to. I just wish I could show her how much she means to me. Yeah. Something I've never considered before, really, is if Millie and Charlie have talked at all about this, I don't think they have. I, I do not think they have. Every time, it's been Caprice. Part of it has been Caprice's insistence to handle everything, but if they're as close as they must be considering the years they've shared together, I wonder if something else is happening. Have you told Millie that? I... I don't want to make things more difficult for her. It's already such a mess. I've been trying to show it, but... Well... You need to tell her! You need to communicate! Communication! It's great! Please communicate! Oh... Losing her best friend young, raising both daughters alongside Mike, and now the marriage? It doesn't take a lot of guessing to understand how carefully Charlie must have been treading ever since the engagement. It's so much. It is so much to deal with. Oh. I feel a spike of familiarity in what she's saying, though. Millie has been acting the same way towards Caprice, feigning normalcy and hoping things will get better somehow. It's a sad recognition that the two are more alike than either thinks. Caprice re-emerges from her room, leaving the door open behind her. She gives a small wave to us. Everything's fine. Mm. Haley was just making sure we're all good here. Oh, I'm glad. Ah, uh, I see. And I spoke to Millie a bit. Oh? Oh? Ah. Charlie perks up immediately, hopeful. That's good news. How is she doing? I don't know. Mm. Fine? It wasn't a long conversation. It wasn't a proper conversation, was it? It was a let's let's put the, the normal mask back on. 
conversation. That's no. I see. Yeah. Um, I told her she could come over. That's good. To talk. Hope that's okay. That's good. No, that's okay. Okay. I take it back. I take it back. I'm sorry. Yes, that's good. Caprice purses her lips and closes her eyes, exhaling sharply. Silence ensues. Slowly, she opens her eyes, glancing between both of us uneasily. I'm at a loss for words. Luckily, Charlie speaks up. When is she coming? Uh, now. She said she'd be here as soon as possible, so... Like, half an hour? Maybe more? Mm hmm. Oh, okay. Let me take a quick shower and I'll get out of your hair. Huh? Uh, no, you don't have to leave. A mixture of shock and fear laces Caprice's voice. She takes a small step forward and waves her hands, her attempt at calming her mom looking more like a desperate flail for help. I think it it is more like a desperate flail for help, honestly. Are you sure? I can't imagine it'd be comfortable talking in front of all of us. Well, everyone's kind of involved, so... I feel a bit put on the spot, but she has a point. If this is their attempt at a reconciliation, I don't want to make things awkward. No, actually, I think having them there would make things so much better. Because if they start to misunderstand each other and spiral, someone can step in and be like, um, actually, take a, take a second, take a breath. Don't say anything you regret. Yes? What, do you think she's gonna feel outnumbered or something? Yeah, just like, <laughs> bully circle as soon as they open the door, just the three of them looming. Uh, as if by saying it out loud, Caprice realizes that's exactly what the concern is, and shakes her head even harder. We're not against her, right? We're all just doing our best. Yeah. If she's gonna take this step, we should meet her in the middle. Yes. Yeah. That's good. Her voice trembles. She grips her hands into fists, her speech just as much an attempt to steal her own resolve as ours. The only traces of the Caprice who gave up on her best friend are found in the cracks of her facade. The uncertain sigh, the glancing away, the fear that this talk will do more harm than good. This is all a big translation for Olive has to be in the room so the readers can actually see it. No, but isn't that what eavesdropping is for? I mean, what? <laughs> no, I think it's like, it's the kind of conversation they have to have themselves, but I don't think it's bad to have support. Make it a little less intimidating because having it just the two of them with how the relationship is. I feel like having like a, I was gonna say a neutral third party. Olive isn't really neutral at this point, but like having a third party around to just like know that somebody else is there and it's not just like a this side, that side kind of thing. I feel like that would be helpful. Ah. For the most part, Caprice is doing what she does best, the very thing I fell for her for, pushing along even when it's difficult, because it's the right thing to do. The only difference is she's now pushing herself. I take her hand into mine to reassure her she won't be doing it alone. Like I said, I'll be right here. Yeah. You got this. Charlie gives an awkward pat on both of our arms, taking an extra second to look at her daughter with a soft expression. Are you proud of her? I am. Of course, Caprice. I'll be here too. Mm -hmm. You got this. They've got this. Everyone's got this. I believe. I believe. Please. Please. Ha. Huh. The next 40 minutes feel more like 400. Charlie barely moves an inch, foregoing her phone for twiddling her thumbs. At some point, Caprice retreats into her room, 
Whether it's to meditate or hype herself up is anyone's guess. The apartment is silent, aside from the television going over a manatee's eating habits in thorough detail. Make notes, Olive. You can impress Caprice with that knowledge. <laughs> and then a doorbell. The request still clear in my mind. I head towards the door and open it to greet Millie. Oh. Uh, hi, sorry, yeah, it's me. Hey, Millie. <laughs> Happy New Year. This feels good, like a gentle greeting, like a very approachable greeting to know that it doesn't have to be this tense, uncomfortable situation. This is a good way to to welcome her in. Happy New Year, Olive. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect to see you here. What a weird sense of deja vu. You did come <laughs> by my place just two days ago. I guess I did. May I come in? Nah, actually I decided you can't come in anymore. <laughs> I step aside. Millie's hair is a bit unkempt, and she takes the opportunity as she walks past to try to smooth it out. She must have rushed here. Yeah, well, she literally said, yeah, I'll, I'll just be here as fast as I can. I'm, I'm so nervous. I'm really nervous. Hold on, I'm going to have some more... More monster. I'm I'm so nervous. Like it's the kind of situation where I'm like, I believe in them. I believe in them to work this out. And it might be uncomfortable. And it might have awkward moments. And it's not gonna be fixed immediately. But I think they're gonna be okay. But I'm still really nervous. I'm so nervous. Hello, Millie. Happy New Year. Mm. Happy New Year, Charlie. Mm. A flicker passes through Charlie's face at the greeting. Her smile softens to a warmer, easier one. Is Caprice in? I called her a bit ago. She said it was fine. I... Yeah. There she is. Oh... Worry, worry, worry. Millie trails off as Caprice exits her room, looking far more nervous than she did barely half an hour ago. Did she lose her nerve? I try to communicate my concerns just through a worried glance, but Caprice's gaze is dead set on the floor. Hey, Millie, I'm here. Want to talk in my room? Mm. Okay. Millie's shoulders relax at seeing her, and she gives a small nod. As she walks over, Caprice looks up towards me for just a moment before continuing. Ollie can come too, right? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Just like, sorry, I, I need my emotional support, Olive, for this conversation. <laughs> I'm just imagining now just Caprice and Millie sitting there and Olive just awkwardly in the corner, like, J just pretend I'm not here. Just, I'm just a decoration, don't mind me. <laughs> oh, uh, um, I don't know. I, I was kind of hoping it would be just us two. I need them there. Caprice, it's okay. Please, Ollie. She sounds so terrified. She sounds absolutely petrified. Both me and Millie exchange a look. I'm not sure what support I could provide exactly. I thought I'd be sitting on the couch and ready to jump in if things went bad. Millie gets over her uncertainty before I do, and nods. Well, uh, alright. A 
small smile crosses Caprice's lips and she beckons me over. I steal a glance towards Charlie, who watches them from her chair in the kitchen. She opens her mouth to say something, but apparently thinks better of it. She notices me looking as she turns back to the table and offers, offers something of a go on then nod. <laughs> I follow the two down the hall. Mm. I find a spot near her desk to sit, sort of half sitting on the desk and half leaning on it. All right, here we go. That really is the cutest bag. I'm I'm sorry, this is really not the moment for these kind of observations, but that is the cutest bag. And also look at the narwhal as well. I oh. Good room. At the very least, it's out of the way compared to how the other two are. Millie stands nearby the door while Caprice sits on the bed, legs crossed. I don't have to wait long for one of them to speak up. But to my surprise, it's Millie who starts the conversation. I forgot how small your room is. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> when you base your entire personality around employee discount souvenir shops. <laughs> I mean, I would too if they were the, this cute. Like, look at them. Look at these things. They're so cute. Anyway, I see this is going just as well as I thought it would. You've really got to get a head start on moving, huh? Hmm. I guess so. Millie's smile fades into a look of resignation. Obviously, the small talk won't go anywhere. Better to get it over with. I've been calling you and texting. I was worried about you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I just... She rocks a bit back, trying to figure out how to continue. When she does, her voice is a bit stronger than before. I was really mad. Yep. It's a simple statement of fact. The anger she's referring to isn't present in her voice, at least not right now. You could have told me, though. I would have given you space. <laughs> she doesn't even realize what she just said, does she? Millie tilts her head. A smile plays on her lips as if she's trying to play along, but eventually her emotions settle on confused. Are you... is that funny to you? Yeah, what have you been doing, Millie? <laughs> yeah, kind of. The energy in the room shifts. Caprice looks away, a mix of frustration and hurt causing her to bite her lip. Can you explain the joke for me? I... I don't get it. That's the exact thing I was afraid of, you know? Like, I didn't really need to give you a reason to avoid me except the one time you want to talk? Mm. That's not fair, Caprice. I think it's just about as fair as what you've been doing. Maybe it isn't. But do you know how much it sucks to feel like you want nothing to do with me? Yeah. I'm sorry, okay? What do you want me to do? I'm not perfect. Saying I'm sorry like that is not an apology. Oh no, that's... It's immediately, immediately throwing up the walls. This, this, they're starting to get defensive already. And when they're defensive, they're not going to be open to listening fully. They need to stop this. They need to stop this. They need to, they need to stop. They need to. <laughs> Yippee, you've arrived in time for pain. Hi, Dima, you have. You've arrived in time for, hold on, where's my... Where's my thing? Where's my thing? There's my thing. 
That is my thing. Right, you know what we're going to do? We're going to just have this on the wall up here for a little bit. Like that. Please. <laughs> oh, thank you for the posture check on Hydrate too. Let me have a big stretch. We got to get ready for this. And a little sippy. Thank you. It's like this is a conversation they need to have. It's just so frustrating seeing them get so close to expressing how they feel. And then it just takes like, it only takes like one offhand comment that is misunderstood or misconstrued and everything just flies off the rails. It's so painful. It's so painful. Anyway. We've got the, I'm sorry. I'm not either. <laughs> I, I just don't know when to talk to you, or leave you alone, or if you even care if I'm around sometimes. Yes, this is what she needs to say. What? Uh, mm. Of course I care. Funny way of showing it. Ever since the engagement, you've been acting like... Like I'm a poison or something. It's not you, Caprice. It's... It's the whole situation. Please mm. explain the difference. Because you've been pretty actively avoiding me specifically for months now. Mm. It's like I've been banging my head against a wall trying to explain this to you. You haven't explained anything, Millie. Well, try <laughs> harder. Every time I think I understand, it's like you move the goalpost just to justify staying upset. Uh, which I think is exactly what she's doing. It's think I enjoy it? Do you think this is fulfilling to me? Look at it this way. Every single time I say anything is wrong at all, you try to fix it. Well, yeah. What's so wrong with trying to make you feel better? Why do you hate it so much when I try to help? Okay, with like, like the camera moving, I'm, I'm gonna move, move that up there. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Because the way you help isn't what I need. Then you should say that. Then you need to say that. Then tell me what you need. <laughs> she can't because she doesn't know. <laughs> she doesn't know what she needs, but she does know what she doesn't need. But I feel like a lot of the time she doesn't realize that it's not going to help her until after it's happened and made her upset. And that's why it's such a problem. Because it's like she can't say don't do this thing if she doesn't realize it's going to upset her until after it's happened. And then the thing happens and she goes, well, that upsets me. Caprice will be like, well, why didn't you tell me earlier? And it's because she didn't realize. <laughs> it's so painful. <laughs> Fighting illegal. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I, I feel like they need this. They, they need this moment. They need to clash a little to figure out what the what they're clashing about <laughs> and work out how to not clash but hi Brinley welcome welcome hope you're doing well happy twofold Tuesday I'm very happy and not emotionally distraught at all trust me I'm fine I don't know what that is <laughs> I, I just know that it's not that yeah then why did you come all the way out here why even bother if you don't know what you want, just that it's not me? Oh. <laughs> because I'm scared of losing my best friend. Mm, okay. This is good. Well, join the fucking club. <laughs> A knock interrupts the two's rising argument. Firm, but evenly paced. <laughs> oh my goodness, the reaction there. You know Caprice had that line cooking for weeks. Yeah, you, you know it's a lot when Caprice is... bringing out the language. Let Caprice say fuck. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, 
Hi. Without waiting for a response, which is probably for the best, as both Caprice and Millie stand there frozen, Charlie creaks open the door. Are we going to get assertive Charlie now? I feel like assertive Charlie is like a slightly rare thing. She she feels more like she tries to be like the peacemaker role. She doesn't want to rock the boat. I want, I want assertive Charlie. Please, assertive Charlie. Yes? I'm sorry. Yes. I don't know what to say yet. I just couldn't stand seeing you two like this. Yes, assertive Charlie. Oh, it makes me wonder. It makes me wonder if she was like just standing by the door trying to like psych herself up to knock on it. Because I don't think she would just immediately... Oh no, maybe she did. Maybe she just immediately knocked and walked in without having time to think about it. And like, think herself out of it. Oh. We're, we're fine, Mom. Sorry, I guess we were a little loud. We'll tone it down. No, it's fine. Be loud. Be loud. You need to get this out. You need to figure this out. You need to sort this. If you are raising your voices, so long as you don't take it too far and then storm out and don't resolve it, that's fine. You need to get this out. You you need to figure this out, you two. I... You got this. The last thing I'm worried about is our neighbor's caprice. Yeah. Caprice's face falls to stare down at the floor, just for a moment. Her eyes find their way towards me, meeting my gaze with guilt. I'm sorry, I I shouldn't have come. No, you should have. Stay. Don't don't you dare leave now. No, Millie, <laughs> please. That's not it at all. It's like all of this is stemming through misunderstanding. And then as they're trying to tell each other what they've misunderstood, they're misunderstanding it more. It's... <sighs> Charlie gives a long sigh. She looks over the room, taking in the state of things. Caprice is somewhat curled up on the bed. Millie's hands are balled into a tight grip. And I'm still off to the side, attempting to give as much space as I can. <sighs> Are you comfortable standing? Oh, um... She looks to her only option, the space next to Caprice. Caprice scoots over a bit, an attempt at assuring her that she won't mind. The only option, eh? <laughs> it's okay. Are you not going to cry at work? I'm sorry if you cry at work. Just, it's allergies. Allergic to emotions. <laughs> that chair doesn't exist. See, like, otherwise, in any other situation, I would have just presumed that Olive was sitting there. But it already said that they're like half leaning sitting on the desk. Maybe they're like really awkwardly like woobled around in this corner, like half on the chair, half on the desk, like kind of not committing to fully sitting down, but like kind of in the way. I've decided that's where they are now. <laughs> awkwardly, Millie sits on the very edge of the bed. Charlie takes her spot in the middle of the room. Olive, do you remember what you asked me a bit ago? If you were okay. Well, that, but I meant what came after. <gasps> if I had spoken to Millie about what I was feeling. Yeah, you haven't. Caprice turns to look at me directly now, all interest trained on me. I wilt under the attention. Ah, <laughs> uh, I remember, yeah. Yeah, please do not perceive. I've been sitting out there thinking. I'm in my 40s, hiding out in my kitchen, while two little girls I'm supposed to protect are arguing. Mm. It seems a little silly when I think about it like that. Yeah. Millie, please understand when I say... She wavers in her confidence. Taking a breath, she begins again, but not before she takes a step forward. 
I love you both with all of my heart. I am so sorry that I haven't reached out to you when I should have. Uh, I love Charlie. I am so truly deeply sorry I have failed to show you that all this time. I wanted to move forward together, but I was afraid. You deserve better. But even still, if I could undo everything, I'd do it in a heartbeat. Okay, but what do you mean by everything? I'd never be able to look at myself in the mirror again if you two cut each other out of your lives. It'd break my heart like nothing else. So I understand if your feelings haven't changed. I'd understand if they never change. But please, please, don't hold anything against Caprice. Mm. I... I, I'd never... I'd never, she says, as she realizes she's kind of been doing that. She takes a sigh. Millie shifts, gazing downwards at her hands. I don't need you to convince me we're a family. I know that, and... I never wanted you to call off the wedding. Oh, it makes me so happy to hear her say that. It makes me so happy. <laughs> I need you all to understand it. It's still different for me, you know? It is. It's, it's not the kind of thing that just immediately everything's fine. Grief is hard. I don't. At all. I'll never be Adelaide. Millie traces the ridges and falls of her braid, nodding slightly. Yeah. You won't. But she's still... She doesn't want to be. Charlie places a hand on Caprice's leg, shaking her head. She turns to Millie after. Your mom was... the brightest, most loving woman I've ever had the privilege of knowing. You were her everything. I wish every single day she could be here to see the amazing woman you've grown to become. I'm so grateful I got the chance to be part of your life growing up. Nothing will ever take that away. Mike and I love each other, but I could never replace her for him. And that's fine, I wouldn't want to. Exactly, it's... It's very easy to be like, well, this is the hole in my life, and this is a role that is similar to the role that left the hole, so this new role is going to try and fill it, but, like, they, they can coexist. Charlie doesn't want to replace Millie's mom. She just wants to support and love her from a different role. Like, adjacent, but different. Different enough that it's not a replacement. He'll never replace her for me, either. Mm. No one wants to forget her. We never could, even if we wanted to. Yeah, she's too important for that. The bits and pieces that get lost to time can't erase how much she means to us. How much of our hearts we lost when she passed. In the short time I've known her, Charlie has always been more mellow and reserved than Caprice. But it was impossible to really comprehend the weight she's been carrying around this entire time. Sorry, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> Sorry, give me a sec. Uh, whew. Whew, this is... This is hard for me too. It's... Uh... <laughs> It's like, it's, it's not family for me, but I've, I've lost several friends. Like, I've, I've lost more friends than a, a person of my age should have <laughs> lost, probably. And, <laughs> and see, my problem now is I started thinking about them. And, <laughs> and like, I'm, I'm never going to forget them, like... One of them was my best friend, like, my my best friend for many years. 
passed away. It's been a while now. It has been a while. But like she's she's always gonna be one of my best friends. Like that's that's never going, but it's <laughs> Thank you for the hydrate. Need to replenish the tears. <laughs> Getting serious deep talk now. <laughs> God, I just I just I just ended up thinking about her. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it's... I feel like it's a similar situation to Charlie as well. Like, do you... Because, like, we know that Adelaide was... Like, she clearly knew that she was dying. <laughs> like, I'm guessing, like, illness of some sort. Like, it wasn't, like, a sudden thing out of nowhere. It was like, this is going to happen. But even then, it, like, it still doesn't make it easier. Like, my, my friend was ill for quite a while. She was... She was fighting for a, a, a very long time. And even, like, knowing it would happen still didn't make it easier when it did happen, you know? It's like... It's, it still doesn't really help. But yeah, she. But she's like, I'm never gonna forget her. Like, I have so many really good friends. I have so many best friends. None of them are ever going to replace her. They they coexist alongside the memory of her. Like, none none of them are like filling that hole. Like, that hole is always gonna be there. But I've kind of filled the hole with happy memories. I guess it's like instead of feeling the despair of grief. Like as time goes on, I just remember the good times. Like, all the things we did together, going on holiday together, visiting places together. When we'd talk about... Talk about Sailor Moon at 1am together. Like, just remembering all those good times. Like, that's never something that's going to be replaced. Even if other memories happen alongside it. But, oh, goodness, I, I didn't... I, I kind of took myself by surprise there. I didn't expect to burst into tears. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I just... Whew, just just hit me. Just hit me. It's, a, it's, it's another thing as well. It's like with grief. You can learn to deal with it, but sometimes it will just hit you out of nowhere. It's, it's not the kind of thing that just vanishes. It just becomes easier to handle. And Wiz as well. Thank you for the head pad. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I genuinely took myself by surprise with that. I didn't think I was... I didn't think this conversation would hit me this hard, but I think, like, I, it's because I have so many parallels with Charlie. Oh, my goodness. Like... Ugh. Huh. Why is this game so relatable? It should be illegal. How dare it? How dare it? Why do I relate with every single character? Why? How? How do you manage this? How did how did this happen? Oh, thank you for the headpads. Oh, I should never feel sorry for feeling sad. Oh, it's like it's true, but it's It's still awkward too. Like I'm I feel like nobody would ever think it with, like, the emotional games I play and the amount I share, but I don't... I don't know. I, I, I'm I not very good at showing my emotions. I'm more of, like, a caprice kind of person. I'm more, like, push it down and distract myself with other things. Like, fake it till you make it, like, pretend it's not there. And try and, like, avoid it. So I'm, I don't really, like, talk about, like, deep feelings very often. It just like it just kind of makes me feel awkward afterwards. Like I'll I'll have a moment where I'm just like bursting into tears, just screaming and crying, and then as soon as it's done, I just feel a bit embarrassed. Like, well, well, that was a lot, but I'm feeling better now, so I feel <laughs> so I'm feeling a bit. Hmm. Oh, there was a Steam review for Steam that criticized it. Oh, a Steam review for for Steam as opposed to anywhere else. Don't worry, I I do the same. 
Uh, they criticized it because Adelaide died forever ago and Millie is still this hung up on it. She's super childish and this isn't realistic. What the heck? What the heck? My friend died years ago and I'm still hung up on it. Like, that's... It's... What? What's not realistic about it? It's too realistic. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness, I can't believe my fictional characters are not perfect and can get over everything instantly. Like, what? God, I, w I wish... Yeah, I wish I could just get over things. That would be great. Wouldn't it be so nice if human brains could work like that? I'd... It's the kind of thing that gets me when... When, like, the stuff revolving around, like, feelings and emotions, and someone will say, like, well, this isn't realistic, that kind of thing always gets to me, because it's like, well, you may not feel that way, but that's nothing to say that other people don't. You cannot presume for everybody else. Like, just because I'm not bothered by one thing doesn't mean someone else won't be super bothered by it. It's, you can't talk for everybody. That is wild. That's wild. Anyway, I can't wait until I've completed this game and I can leave my 12 paragraph Steam review talking about my entire life story. <laughs> oh, I'm just, I... Yeah, that really surprised me though. Like... <laughs> I think it was this line, <laughs> yeah. I think it's this line that got me. These lines. These these are the lines that got me. Because <laughs> it's like... Because like I was thinking about my best friend and it's like I realized like I haven't thought about her in a little while. But, like, the fact that I haven't thought about her in a while doesn't mean that I've forgotten about her. It's... It just means that, like, other things are alongside and I don't have to, like, dwell on the grief. It's... Ha. Uh, ha. Uh, oh, my goodness. Also, Brisket, hello. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Welcome to Deep, Deep Thoughts. Deep Thoughts, heavy topics. I'm... I'm okay now, but yeah, that that like that got to me more than it, I thought it would. And you know, it, it it's like a, it's a very similar thing, like the scene with Millie's journal as well, Millie's mom's journal. That hit me way harder than I thought it would as well, because of like how <laughs> how personally relatable it felt. Ooh, it's. Oh, just this game is just a masterpiece. I'm so blown away by it. I, I, like the expect the expectations going in. I knew it was going to be good, but it has just consistently managed to blow me away over and over. I'm, I love this game so much. I am. Oh, I feel like you always come in in the heavy moments. Yeah, because last time was the Christmas scene too, and now it's the. Big, big confrontation scene. <laughs> Don't worry, there are happy moments in this game too. I promise. I promise. <laughs> we had some great times earlier. It's, uh, but yeah, this this game it deals with some really, really heavy topics, but it does it in such a masterful way. I'm so blown away. I love this game. But yes, welcome. Happy Twofold Tuesday. I hope you're doing well. I hope you've had a good start to the week. Yep. In the short time I've known her, Charlie has always been more mellow and reserved than Caprice. But it was impossible to really comprehend the weight she's been carrying around this entire time. I can't see her expression well from where I am, but suddenly Millie stands up from the bed. She's trembling. Shock and fear quickly wash over Charlie's face at the motion. I can only guess how many worries are shooting through her mind over what she said or didn't say right. Millie takes a breath. I'm sorry. 
too. That's what she needed to hear. That's what she needed to hear. Mm. Her voice cracks. Charlie reaches out and pulls her into a hug as Millie begins to cry. <laughs> I feel so out of place. I want to get out, give these three some privacy. I stand up, but as I do, I notice Caprice. On the bed alone as Charlie rubs Millie's back, Caprice cries, too. The emotion from the room is overwhelming, but when I see that, any feelings of being out of place are immediately shoved aside as I go over to her side and pull her into a hug of my own. She cries into my shoulder quietly as Millie continues speaking, muffled in Charlie's arms. I've, I've missed you a lot too, but... But I thought, I really thought you would hate me after all of this. No, Millie, no, never. The cries subside just long enough for Millie to glance over at me and Caprice. Seeing Caprice is unable to look up, she makes eye contact with me directly. I understand immediately. I rub Caprice's back and take her hand, speaking in a hushed whisper. Hey. What? I think Millie wants you. Really? Yeah. Really, really. Come on. Oh. I stand up, offering Caprice myself as support to lean on as she lifts off the bed. She leans on me for the three steps it takes to reach her family. <laughs> Caprice, I... I don't remember her. Not really, and I'm sorry I don't because maybe I could understand you better. But I care about you. I didn't mean to... I, I mean, I was trying to cheer you up. That's all. I wanted you to be happy. Please be happy. I didn't do it the right way, but that's why. I tried everything, thinking maybe the next thing would magically solve all our problems. Yeah. And it didn't. I thought if you could just be as excited about the wedding as I am, you wouldn't need to fight anymore. I'm sorry. Caprice grips my hand as she speaks. So tightly, I think both of our knuckles turn white. As she finishes, her grip loosens. She turns away, towards me. I give her hand two quick squeezes. She glances up to me, her eyes shielded by her wispy bangs. I try to guide her gaze with my own, back towards her family. One more little push. Aren't you going to meet her halfway? Yeah, that's what you said, right? Oh, I should, shouldn't I? Yeah. I'll be right here. Yeah. Promise? I do. <laughs> family. Oh, family. Caprice manages a small smile at that. She lets go of my hand, takes one more step, and goes the full distance, running into Millie and Charlie, wrapping her arms around them. Any semblance of composure quickly falls away as the three collapse into a hug. The three cry, but there's a lightness to it, 
a love strong enough that makes them all laugh just a little at how tightly they're holding each other. Caprice, I'm sorry. No, I don't want to hear it. But... It's okay. I know already, okay? I know. Millie sighs, but holds her sister tighter all the same. It's more clear now than ever. My place is besides Caprice, but this moment is wholly theirs. All I can do is wipe my eyes and do my best to burn this image into my mind. Me too. Me too. Burning it into my mind, thank you. Huh. Of Charlie and her children. Two weeks later, okay. Oh. Good meeting, everyone. Adjourn. <sighs> oh, thank goodness the meetings are on again. Thank goodness. Whew. And with that, the first art club meeting of the final semester concludes. It was as if the winter break never even happened. No one missing a beat in their usual routine. This is going to be our last semester as a club, so we have a lot of ground to cover and not a lot of time to do it. Yeah, best get to work then, eh? Let's make it one to remember. Yes. You're the boss, boss. It feels like it's been forever since we've had a day like this. It's hard to believe that for a few months this felt normal. I can only hope it lasts, even if the clock is already ticking down. Sounds to me like it's not time to end the meeting yet. Oh? Eileen? What's wrong? Even after everything, and knowing what kind of person Eileen really is, it's hard not to feel at least a little nervous whenever she volunteers herself into a conversation. Like Capri said, we only have a semester left before we're locked out of this room. We're going to need to settle on a new meeting spot if the club's going to continue afterward. Yes, Eileen! Eileen! I'm so glad! Yes! Yes! This is the best way she can prove that she's here because she wants to be. This is the best possible way she could ever prove that to Caprice. Just be like, hey, Caprice, were you still having doubts? Eileen just volunteered herself to, to find a meeting spot. I mean, she won't see it that way. She'll be like, well, no, I suggested it, but you guys gotta do the work. But, like, this... I'm... I... She... I, I'm so glad she took everything on board. I'm... I'm so, so glad. I'm... I love this art club. I love this club. I am... I'm still a member. I've decided. I forcibly inserted myself into the art club. I'm also a member. Thank you. <laughs> I love this. The room falls into stunned silence. Even Wallace is struggling to hide the shock on his face. Caprice and Allison are a lot more forthcoming with their reactions though. The former looking on the verge of tears. And she's so, this is it. We finally get to appreciate, ca capri capriciate her. It's capriciation day. Finally, the recognition, the acknowledgement. Knowing that it is worth it and people like you. People like you. People are not just doing this because they have to. It's proof. I love this. Oh, L. L? Nuh uh. No <laughs> nicknames. She really tried. There's not really many ways you can nickname Eileen. Really? Because you can't just say I, because then it's just like I. Aye aye, Captain. Lean? Leany could kind of work. It would be a bit weird. L. Yeah, L is a really interesting choice. She tried. 
I don't remember you enforcing that rule after our aquarium visit last year. <laughs> School and leader. Wait, that's a different character. A very different character. How about best girl? Well, I mean, that is subjective. I feel like they're all the best. I love all of these characters. Oh, I've, I've missed this. I love this art club. She thought it was funny back then. <laughs> of course it got a pass. As Wallace and I press at Eileen's buttons, Allison hovers around us, tilting her head back and forth, trying to shake an idea loose. I love how every time Allison's thinking, she's like, Ugh. Get the thought out of my head. <laughs> She's right, though. Mm -hmm. We should figure out a yeah. new place sooner rather than later. We have half a year to decide, but that'll go by fast. Very true. Wallace be smirking. Yeah, I, I love how Wallace was just like, hey, yeah. I'm sure the diner wouldn't mind housing us during <gasps> slow periods or yes. after hours. Mom would love to see everyone. Decis decis <laughs> I'm forgetting how to speak. Decisions are being made. Oh. You think so? Yes. Her face lights up the way it used to. Immediate and radiant. The old owner put comfort and community at the top of her priorities when running things. I think her little club would fit in perfectly yes. with her idea of the place. It's community. It's a community gathering. Of five people. <laughs> Sounds like all our problems have been solved then. Yeah. Not until we can get actual confirmation. Talk to your management ASAP. I love how no nonsense Eileen is. She she knows what needs to be done. She's gonna make sure it gets done. Yes, ma'am. Okay, in that case, the meeting is now adjourned. For real this time. Yay! Wallace and Eileen slowly file out of the room after exchanging their goodbyes. Allison looks ready to follow, but stops halfway to the door, returning to Caprice and I after a moment's deliberation. <gasps> Bonus Allison scene for doing the Allison friendship route, I guess. Hey, Olive. Yeah? Even if the call was meant for me, it seems to have done an equally good job of attracting Caprice's attention, tilting her head up from the bag she was in the middle of packing up. What's up? The ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> I just... I don't know if you remember, but I told you way at the start that I liked our small club just the way it was. Yeah. That sounds vaguely familiar, I think. I bobbed my head a couple times, trying to jolt the memory awake. I frown when my attempts end in failure, which I'm worried Allison misinterprets as she begins to fidget with her hands. I guess I wanted to say that I'm glad you're around. Aww. The club really feels complete with you here now. I bet Allison has been thinking about that comment this whole time. Worrying about it. And Olive is just like, they, they just immediately forgot it. That's so funny. <laughs> it's the kind of thing I do. Overthink a statement. Be like, oh, I hope you didn't take this the wrong way. And then the person's like, oh, I, I, no, I didn't. <laughs> I can feel the warmth rising to my cheeks. Hopefully not as obvious to Caprice and Allison as it is to me. <laughs> the thinker. The overthinker. Oh, I uh, appreciate it. But where'd this come from? I'm not really sure, honestly. Uh... The mood just felt a whole lot lighter today, you know? It did, didn't it? It felt right. I do, yeah. Content with my answer and accompanying smile, Allison turns to Caprice. I missed having you around, Caprice. Yes, Capriciation Day! Let her know how much you care. Let her know how much you appreciate her. Don't take it for granted. I love this. I'm so happy. Her message to Caprice was considerably shorter, but it managed the rare feat of leaving her speechless all the same. After a few seconds, Caprice finally moves to reply. I missed you too, Allie. Yay! Ca 
Caprice being unable to find her words is one thing, but Alison looks just about ready to cry. Before she gets the chance to start, the club door opens again, snapping her out of her sentimental trance. Hey, everything okay? What's keeping you? Just emotions, don't worry. Ali and Ollie were just talking about sappy stuff for a <laughs> while. Everything's good. Just imagine Eileen just being like, oh yeah, leave me out of that. <laughs> I'm glad. I barely said anything. I think about protesting aloud, but it's probably not a battle worth waging. Eileen offers a rare smile, ruffling her girlfriend's hair as she looks at me. These two have a lot in common, huh, Caprice? Yeah. Tons. He. I don't see it. Allison's smile seems to disagree with me, though. Because <laughs> they're both protagonists. Get it, gamers? Yeah. Get it? <laughs> but no, I, I feel like they do as well, though. It's They're both just, like, very sweet people. They're both just really incredibly lovely people. And honestly... That's that's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to just be lovely. <laughs> it's very difficult because human beings sure are human beings. But oh, I I love I love all of I, lo I love everyone in this game. Even Heather, kind of a little bit, maybe not. But you, you know, it's fine. Oh, I love that. I'm so glad I did uh, the the Allison friendship path first. I feel like that it made like logical sense as to what Olive would do. Cause like in the first scenario, I don't think Olive would want to bother Eileen. I think Olive would feel a little unsure about Wallace's ability to help with how alternative art his stuff is compared to everything else. And Allison is just so sweet and approachable. I think they would have gone to Allison first. So I feel like that worked out so nicely. <laughs> and the same with Millie's as well. Like, I liked all three of the friendship routes. But I think, like, my true root in my heart is the Darren one. Fully just here for Darren. I'm... that That's the one that I'm choosing as my personal canon route. <laughs> I liked going through the others to get the full story. But uh, Darren. Darren... Darren fan club. I'm still one of the founding members. Thank you. Not long afterward, the room is finally empty, leaving just Caprice and I to idly pack away our things and quietly enjoy each other's company. Just like the good old days, huh? Yeah. From the long forgotten age of four weeks ago. That's like a hundred years. I sure felt that way lately. Yeah. Yeah, it has been a long four weeks, huh? Tell me about it. Finishing stuffing her bag full with the art supplies she brought for the day, she finds herself a seat on the edge of a table, looking out a nearby window. Weather's gonna start warming up soon. <laughs> the weather... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Spring's right around the corner. <laughs> I'm surprised Suzume is not in chat right now, honestly. <laughs> it is, huh? Yeah, can't wait. It's gonna be a busy one. She starts kicking her legs back and forth, occasionally grazing the chair tucked in underneath the desk. Are you gonna stop riding the trolley to campus once the snow's gone? Oh. I, uh, hadn't really thought that far ahead, really. I mean, it's not like I've ever had a reason to keep riding in the warmer weather till now. Mm. <laughs> Sorry if you're busy with work. <laughs> no, I'm, I I said it in a place of like, look at this. Look at this. Uh, you, I should have known. I should have known. I should have known that was a setup for something. <laughs> How dare you? Thank you. <laughs> I do hope your work's going well, though. I hope you, I hope you're not crying too much at work. 
But do you want to walk with me? That would involve leaving the house, so... Yeah. <laughs> oh. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but you like the trolley rides. I was thinking, though... I had just done some upkeep on my bike before the winter hit. <laughs> I just added an extra seat, just casually, as you do. <laughs> yeah. Your one-seater bike? I think we could work something out. If you don't mind holding on. Oh my. Caprice's eyes sparkle at the prospect. The door opening behind us seems to catch us both by surprise, turning around in unison to get a good view of our visitor. Oh, hello! It turns out we have two. Half of the school's writing club. Yo. Hey. Afternoon, you two. First day of classes, treat you well? <laughs> yeah, we've got glasses, Millie. And Haley doesn't have her headphones on. You know how it is. Just throwing class syllabuses around and then shooing us yeah. out the door. Oh, <laughs> nice glasses, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. I was complaining about my contacts to Haley the other day when she asked why I bothered. I didn't have a good answer. Yeah. Haley smirks at that. She's really going wild with these personal changes this year. They both have changes. We got the hair, we got the glasses, we got the favorite color. <laughs> new year, new me. A new start. <laughs> so, what's up? We're all done with our club for the day. Unless you've come to beg to join. It's so nice seeing her like this again. It's... <laughs> yes. This Caprice. This is my Caprice. Yes. We'll think about it. <laughs> I love that she was joking and she's getting like a genuine answer. She did not expect that. Goblin face activated. <gasps> Millie and Haley share a knowing look. But the secret doesn't remain hidden for long as Caprice glances between the two of them with genuine excitement in her eyes. Really? You're gonna join? I said I'll think about it. Well, think fast. <laughs> what about the riding club? We're ditching it. What? It's called disbanding. Disbanding, ditching, same, same thing. Same thing. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, she didn't expect that. I'm sorry to hear that. I think? But judging by the sense of finality hanging in the air, everyone except me must have expected this to happen sooner or later. It's fine, really. It's better this way. We actually stopped by because we wanted to see if you two were still here. Yeah. And... And Haley elbows Millie a bit, knocking her glasses to a slight tilt. Millie pretends to adjust them a bit longer than necessary, giving her companion a mock pout. <laughs> and ask if you maybe wanted a ride home? It's not the largest car around, but there's room for you too, Olive. Yes! June bug time! Woohoo! I don't mind riding shotgun if you two wanted to sit together. <laughs> I turn to Caprice, waiting for a response. Yeah, sounds good. We'll be on in a couple of minutes. Just gotta double check and make sure everything's locked up. I'm so glad. I'm so happy. I'm so glad. Okay, just don't keep us waiting long. We've still got dinner plans, right? Dinner? Wouldn't miss him for the world. Yay. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so glad. Millie's the first to leave with a small wave, leaving Haley aimlessly hovering around the door. Hey. How are you doing, Haley? 
She touches her headphones like she's about to tune out the world again, but instead her hand falls away after a solid pause. Haley walks back into the room a few more steps towards me. Chetty Jew, hello, welcome. Welcome on in. Love this art style, me too. This game is so beautiful. It is such a good game. I love it so much. Welcome on in. Welcome to um, the final moments of one of the roots in this game. So if, if you are interested, there will be spoilers. <laughs> but welcome. Thanks for stopping in. I hope you're doing well. Are we good? Yes. Oh, wait. Oh, she's totally been worried about that, huh? Oh. oh, you'll lurk then, but you'll be back. Oh, thank you for stopping in either way. But yes, uh, this is this has been an ongoing stream series I've been doing for many Tuesdays now. But um, I I have to say this game is so good. Check out Twofold. This it's such a good game. It's I just I can I cannot say enough how much I love it. It's so good. Studio Elan Lover, yes! Well, I'm actually... Yeah, there's the command. <laughs> the command just came up. I'm actually part of the, the Studio Elan Bellflowers stream ambassadors. <laughs> uh, I'm also a member of Verpro, which is like a a kind of relative to Studio Elan, a VTuber group. <laughs> So I've got a few connections. Uh, my model artist for my VTuber model is actually Adi Rosa from Studio Elan, who does a lot of stuff. I've I've got the I've got the Adi model. <laughs> but yes, we we stand Studio Elan here. It's, it's so good. They just every time they they just knock it out of the park every time. It's so good. Oh, thank you for the hair change too. Ruffle my hair up a bit. Make it a, a little tussled. <laughs> but yeah, I, I love this so much. Because this one is like a... This is like a bell... Bell house. Bell house? The, the publishing branch of Studio Elan. But I think like most of the dev team for this game are like being like pulled into the Elan umbrella. <laughs> it's like... It's like whenever it's like, oh yeah, this is the publishing branch. Um, also part of the family now. You're here now. <laughs> oh, thank you for doing the Addy shout out as well. But yeah, this is Salty Salty Studios. And I, they've done such a good job with this. This game is, it's just, it's just been so much more wonderful than I thought it would be. It's so relatable. All of the characters are incredible. It's, it's such a good time. I love it. But yeah, I'm I'm getting very close to the end of the game now. So, yeah, if you if you don't want spoilers, then now's the time to lurk. But thank you for stopping in though. <laughs> oh, I've I've just I love this. Oh, I'm and the fact that Haley's clearly been worrying about this. I urgh. She looks at me directly. The last time we spoke wasn't in the best circumstances, with her and Millie somewhat barging into my apartment. Still, after everything, I didn't expect her to still be thinking about that. Also, Peachy, thank you for the head pad! Welcome, welcome! How's it going? Happy Tuesday. Happy Twofold Tuesday. A smile comes to me naturally, and I give her a nod. Yeah, of course. She sighs in relief. You really didn't need to worry about that, you know. We were both just trying to help, right? Yep. The power of the two secondary colors. <laughs> right. Still. Thanks for everything. Oh, I love Haley. She's so good. Oh, I hope Twofold Tuesday has been good. It has! It, this game is amazing. It's been really emotional. Like, it's... I've I've cried multiple times today, but it's just so good. It's so I mm, I can't praise it enough. I love this game. You too. Even if in the end Caprice and Millie handled it all by themselves, 
uh, all themselves, uh, I'm still grateful that Millie had someone by her side like Haley while they figured it out. I'm sure she feels the same towards me and Caprice. Without anything else to add, Haley and I find ourselves at a rather awkward standstill of not knowing how to really end the conversation. <laughs> Something eventually comes to her and, gest and gestures towards the door with a thumb. I better go catch up with Millie. Meet you there. Yep, that works. <laughs> I love the moment of just like start a conversation, not know how to end it, just like stand there awkwardly until someone's like okay i'll i'll be going <laughs> shakes computer i love this visual novel so much i do i love it oh and thank you for the lurk as well peachy i hope you have a good tuesday thank you for stopping in ah, i'm i'm so glad i love i love this game and with that she puts her headphones on this time avoiding eye contact as she makes a beeline for the door. With a thud, the doors closed, leaving just us two again. I turn to Caprice. She's looking out the window again, her smile unwavering. No trolley today. Mm. Looks like it. Yay! She stands to her feet, digging around her pockets for the room key as she slides her backpack over her shoulder. She gives me a quick kiss on her way out the door. Ready to go riding, buddy? Yeah. Lane the way. Yay! We did it! Caprice Act 3! Walk with me. Ah we did it! We did it! Oh, we're walking the other way this time! Ah! It feels like it's been a while <sighs> Since I've seen us really smile Look, they're on the bike together! I'm yes! Oh, I'm so glad Oh, it's August with the watering can! She's using the watering can! Oh! I love this! Oh, so cute! Yeah, back for the credits! This is so cute! <laughs> Millie has so many books! Oh, I love that! Oh, wait, the writing credits are listed first on Millie's and art on Caprice's. That's so smart. That's so clever. I love that. Oh. <laughs> that, is, that is me at the moment with the fan. <laughs> I like the mug. <laughs> oh, I love this. Oh. Learning how to pick locks, I see. <laughs> of course, Caprice would want to know how to do something like that. I kind of want to know how to do that now, to be honest. Join the art club! Oh. oh my goodness, yes, she cooked eggs. She cooked eggs and did not blow up the kitchen. So proud. So proud of her. Let her cook. She knows how to now. It's okay. Adop Wait, they're adopting a puppy? They're adopting a puppy? Oh. Oh, they're adopting a puppy. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the eggs are on the plate and not the ceiling. I know, I'm so proud. <gasps> Look at the aquarium, of course. Oh. 
Oh, I love this so much. I love it. I love this. Hi, Millie. Hi. We're riding back together. Yeah. <laughs> Two months later, epilogue time, <gasps> wedding time. <gasps> Following a long, cold winter, the trees had finally begun to regain their green. Underneath a pleasantly warm sun, Charlie and Mike said their vows. After a year of heartbreak and strife leading up to this moment, it was over in an instant, punctuated by a modest applause and falling flower petals. Coming from a family as small as theirs, it was the first wedding Olive had ever gotten the chance to attend. The image in their head of a big grand event didn't quite match the more subdued reality of the ceremony today. Oh, look at this. I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. I'm so happy. And now, Olive, Caprice, Millie and Haley joined a handful of friends and family, watching the couple share their first dance together, moving to and fro in a subtle, endearing clumsiness that could easily be mistaken for grace. I love this so much. Three beautiful couples on screen right now, right? In this house, we support the Haley Millie ship. Honestly, like, I'm... If I hadn't been leaning towards Caprice root, personal canon root anyway, this would solidify it. Like, this feels right. This... This feels right. This feels good. I'm happy. Best thing about being a dev is you can just decide to make your head canon canon. Yeah, just... It's all good, just... Uh... It was just like a Millie Root also canon, except they realize they're better as friends after a while. And then Olive gets together with Caprice and Millie gets together with Haley. I mean, what? <laughs> huh. They look good together. They do. Everyone looks good together here. I love this. Yeah. Hmm. The four huddled together sharing whispers to themselves. Olive watched on, even as little bursts of conversation brought their attention back to their trio of friends. Despite only knowing them for a few months, this was the first time Olive had seen Mike and Charlie act this way. They no longer had good reason to hide their affections for the sake of their daughters. They could actually show it now, they can actually... They can actually love each other without worrying about how other people react. That, that makes me happy. If the two had noticed the quiet chatter, they had done a good job of hiding it. Never losing each other's eyes for even a moment, the world didn't matter to them right now. A reprieve well over a decade in the making. Caprice's smile couldn't have been wider, her body swaying gently with the music as she whisked Olive along with her, their hands intertwined. It was only when she caught a glimpse of Millie out of the corner of her eye, head down and hands clenched together in front of her, did her brilliant smile lose its luster. Hey, are you okay? It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard for her. The question was enough to break Millie from the trance she would have preferred to stay in. Yeah, I'm fine. No, you're not. You don't have to watch if you don't want. I'm sure they'd understand. No, no, I... 
I want to be here. Really, it's just... This is really it, huh? The end. No, the start. Oh, Millie doesn't have a braid. She, do she does have like a smaller braid on the other side. It showed like when they were all sitting together. She's got the, the reduced braid. But yeah, she doesn't have the, the large side braid. Millie was quick to wipe her tears before they could even start forming, determined to retain her composure. I don't think so. And Caprice has got a braid as well. It's not the end. End of a chapter, maybe. Yeah! But still part of the same book. Yeah! The writing club's really rubbed off on you, huh? Yes, he has small braid. Ah! Uh... I love this. I'm... It's going to be hard. It's not the kind of thing that she can just, like, immediately get over and be fine with, like, straight away. It's going to take time. It's going to be difficult. But... But they have each other. They have each other now. And I'm... It makes me so happy. Haley responded with one of her usual shrugs. Unlike similar replies she had made before, this one had felt more like a deflection than a result of her apathy. Will you three stop trying to make me cry in public? <sighs> Unbelievable. Get those tears out. Just know we're here for you if you need it, okay? <laughs> You've got a reliable little sister now, you know? Yeah. Oh, you. Oh, you. As quiet as the group attempted to be, a small ripple of laughter made its way above the music anyway. Aww. Olive released their partner's hand, the sisters pulling each other into a hug. These embraces had become more common in the last few weeks, like the two had been making up for lost time. And today, they held each other in both celebration of the day and support for one another. Tears pricked at Millie's eyes. Her family was all here, both found and familial. And Caprice's own tears fell silently at the joy. Charlie and Mike continued to waltz together on the dance floor. They had worn smiles all day, but those paled in comparison to the ones they had now. The last several months had been the most turbulent of Olive's life, with some of the highest highs and lowest lows. Their time as a stranger to this circle, isolated and desperate for help, felt like several lifetimes ago. In the last few months, they found themselves easily falling into a waltz of their own with Caprice. Their space in each other's world was not so much carved out as it was simply found. Each step together uh, each step taken together, bringing them to a new day filled with wonder and love. <laughs> Caprice reached once again for their hand. The tears she shared with Millie were beginning to dry. Olive wiped her cheek with their free hand all the same, and she rested her face against it, looking up at them. Do you want to get the next dance? Yeah. Neither of them had ever danced before. More than anything. But they weren't going to let that stop them. <laughs> Kiroboros, hello! Thank you for the head pat. Welcome. After endless cold and cloudy days, the start of a new chapter was penned underneath a pristine blue sky. <laughs> Two women started the day as friends and ended it as sisters. Separate yet undeniably together, their stories were written on opposite sides of the same piece of paper. <sighs> Circle back around both paths and something borrowed something blue. Oh my goodness, wait. I just realized as well, because Millie's epilogue was called, like, the achievement was something old, something new. 
something borrowed, something blue. It's the, <laughs> it's the whole wedding phrase. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that. I love that. Uh, yeah, the wedding thing of like having something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. I, l I love that. I love that. And now you've unlocked the following extras. What have I unlocked? <gasps> Guest art. Sounds of Winter soundtrack. Thank you for reaching the end of this story. Now the first chapter is waiting for you. <sighs> the visual novel Perfect Circle is now available. Access it within the unlock stream. <gasps> oh, <th> <laughs> I'm gonna cry again. I'm gonna cry again. <laughs> I'm just gonna cry again. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, look at this. Look at this, this is so beautiful. This is, ah. I love this. Thank you for the hydrate. Yeah, I, wait, I need to I need to replenish my tears. I need... Oh, I love this. And I love how I was right. I was right. I figured when I did the Caprice route, it would show the blue flowers. And then the flower for Millie, the cactus for Olive. They're, they're all here. They're all here. I'm so happy. Oh, I love it. I love this. Anyway, I've completed Millie's route. I've completed Caprice's route. And next time, Oh, next time I guess I have Eileen and Wallace first. But uh, hopefully that won't take me as long as Heather took me when I finished uh, Millie's route. <laughs> but yeah, that means next week. It's not the end of Twofold Tuesdays yet. I still have more to go. But yeah, well, we can do the Wallace friendship route. We can do the Eileen friendship route. And then the perfect circle visual novel. Oh, I'm so... I'm so excited. I'm so glad I managed to reach the end of the route. And that was absolutely perfect timing as well because it is, it's a minute to six o'clock. It managed to perfectly time itself for the stream. That is amazing. That's amazing. Oh, perfect circle's only a few scenes long. If I get through the friend routes quick enough, it'll be the last stream. <gasps> the last Twofold Tuesday. Could it be? Oh my goodness, I'm not ready for it to end yet. I'm <laughs> I love this. I've loved this so much. But yeah, I think that yeah, that means next week probably will be the last Twofold Tuesday. Wow. Oh, this has been so amazing though. I'm I'm so happy. Wait, let's look at the guest art before I finish. I I know it's like it's time It is the time where I usually end the stream like right now. But I, I wanna I wanna look at the guest art. <gasps> Addy. Addy guest art. It's it's the Charlie! <laughs> oh and I got an achievement for that, for browsing the guest art gallery. Addy art. Whoa! Look! So shiny. Eating eggs. Oh, Let's have a look. I love this. I love this so much. I have a print of this art. I love it. It's so pretty. Let's have a look. Oh, motorbike. Oh, I love this. Oh, I love this. Aramir art. Oh, that's so cute. It's so cute. Bird lover. That's a great username. Okay, I like this too. <laughs> Millie Root, Caprice Root, uh, Olive has two hands. <laughs> Black Waltz 3. This is so cute. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, Final Fantasy. No, don't fight Mr. Mo. Don't fight Mr. Mo. How could you? I also love how it's just like Millie with a book. Uh, Caprice with art tools. Olive gets a knife. 
Could be like a frying pan, could have been something else like that. No, it's, it's gotta be the knife. Olive with a knife. Caps! Oh, look at this, this is, I love this so much. I love this, this is so cute. It's got everything. <laughs> oh. Aries. Hi. <laughs> Don't be late. Almost there. I see you. <laughs> I love Haley as well. Hi, Haley. Loveland Dial. Oh, this is so cute. Oh, it's so pretty. All of this art is so amazing. Mado Cavi. <laughs> oh, I love this. This is great. A lot of love and passion went into Twofold, and I'm glad this beautiful story is here for everyone to enjoy. Me too. That's exactly how I feel too. Oh, can you be selfish and oh, back to your aunt, go to the, the top right. <gasps> oh, my oh, I'm so glad. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out to me. I'm, s yes. Oh, <laughs> my heart, my heart. My heart, thank you. Oh my god. Oh, I'm I love this. Thank you. I'm so I'm so glad you mentioned that. I wanted to see that. An optimistic otter. Oh look at the otters, look at them. I love these. I love this. Papaya. Chino. Oh, wait, what is this game? I want to play this game. What is this card game with cat cards? I want to play this. <laughs> Unless it's just Uno, in which case I don't want to play it. <laughs> I, I love the, the, the Haley looking at the camera here. And the minute. <laughs> Thank you for everything. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Oh, and I, the, 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 I love this. I love this. I love this game. I love this game so much. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. That was... Mm, that was so good. I'm so glad. But yeah, it's uh, it's five past six now, and I feel like... Tiffany's probably going to be getting quite mad at me because I meant to have fed her like five minutes ago. And I sure haven't done that yet. So with that, I shall bloop. I, I uh, bloop. There we go. Now I bloop. But I will head on over to here and find someone to send a raid on to. But thank you so much for joining me. It looks like next week is going to be the last Twofold Tuesday, which is going to be so weird gonna be so strange I've gotten so used to twofold Tuesdays now I've been looking forward to Tuesdays <laughs> because of this game it's been so good oh really glad I liked the caprice path I loved it I, I've loved all of this honestly it's it's just been such a joy to play every week even like the emotionally devastating moments I love it I love them but a thank you for being here as well I always really appreciate the <laughs> that you're up at 6am to to join me while I'm playing but it's been so good it's such a great game but yeah I should probably see about feeding my cat and also myself I should probably get myself some dinner <laughs> so with that let's find a raid target let's see who is on but yeah this has just been so so lovely so lovely to play I love it Right, who's around? Who's on? Oh, there's not as many people I know online as usual. Hmm. Who shall I raid? Oh, actually, I think I'm going to send the raid over to Musagi. Because Musagi's doing a, uh, a partner push at the moment, trying to reach partner. 
but uh, Muse art is really, really cool. Amazing, cool art. And it's an art stream as well, so I'm going to send you over that way. But yes, here is the raid message. If you're subbed, we have the comfy emote. If not, we will send hearts. And I'll send you over to Musagi to a comfy art stream after finishing Caprice's route in the art club. <laughs> Feels quite fitting. Feels quite nice going to an art stream from this. But yes, that is it from me for now. I won't be streaming tomorrow, but I will be back on Friday for some more uh, Divinity Original Sin Chaos with Xander. And then I won't be streaming at the weekend, but... I will be at a convention. I'm going to be at a VTuber Expo in Birmingham, UK, on specifically the Sunday. And I'm going to be there in person. I'm going to go visit the con and walk around and buy stickers. <laughs> so if anyone is going to that, if anyone is close to Birmingham and is going to Expo, I will be there. Look out for a pink-haired cat girl from the UK. I'll bring my automaton with me. I'm going to have worms on strings if anyone sees me. <laughs> But yes, for now, I must go have some dinner. But yeah, this has been so much fun. I love this game. Ha! Ah, and it's it from me for now. I hope everyone has a lovely rest of the week. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. And until next time, bye-bye!